Welcome to Click Star, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, Alex Coons, and Tyler Spees. Hey everybody, welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host Daniel Powell speaking. Just want to let everybody know Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com, world's largest hero clicks retailer. Find hero clicks new and old on Trollandtoad and use coupon code Clickstoff for 5% off your hero clicks order. Merchant and pre order items do not apply. If you like what you're hearing today on Clickstoff, check us out patreon.com forward slash Clickstoff. A uh, dollar and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways. Five dollars and above gets entered into our Discord server for hero click strategy and tactics discussion. <coughs> um, this month is a brick of exoswords, courtesy of trollandtoad.com. Sorry, we can only ship sealed product to U.S. citizens. Um, but check it out, facebook.com forward slash clickstoff. Uh, lots of people can enter that one. That one, that entry is open up to everybody and our patrons get double and triple entries check it out you see the pin post there um and joining me today is jason apocalypse alvi hello hello and alex apocalypse coos maybe probably but uh maybe so uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about tarot cards and our world's team's progress and that sort of thing. Um, but Jason, so speaking of apocalypse, can we mm-hmm. can we just talk about for a moment how we had seven legacy apocalypses in our hand and we couldn't get them bought? Yeah, right. The guy didn't want to make a deal. Right. So <laughs> we went to another local store, uh, not Big Bang, that has had hero clicks in the past. They brought out every hero clicks they still had in inventory. Um, mm-hmm. They gave us a number uh, to buy it all. It was way it was too much. A ridiculous, a ridiculous, a ridiculous number. Right. It may not have been ridiculous, but it was very, very top end of what it was purchasable for. Um, yeah, ninety percent of what we were looking at was garbage. Right. Yeah, like Phoenix Forces and that kind of stuff doesn't sell very well at all anymore. So that's what it was. It was like boxes and and boxes of CUR. It was all unorganized and that sort of thing. Well, I gave Mm -hmm. them an offer. That wasn't good enough. And they had a box. We found seven GO3 apocalypses. And it had a couple of Thanoses and a couple of other... It had three Thanoses and a couple other ones. I gave them an offer on all of that. Uh, There was some other stuff in there. It was like a a KC Wonder Woman and some, you know, $5 to $20 ones. Uh, gave him an offer on that. No, nope, can't do it. I said, well, what's the buy offer? Uh, I don't know. We've got to look it all up. G- give him your number. Give him. And I, so I, I gave him my number on that stuff. Uh, it's now been six were days. They, were, they, were they expecting you to like want stuff? Or did you like show up and be like, hey, do you have anything in the back? Like, how did, like, well, we knew they had stuff in the back. So we did show up kind of unannounced, right? We, we had been t- we had been tipped off that there were things in. The okay, bank. okay, because to me it's like, well, if this dude showed up to sell stuff, it's like, well, I gotta look it up. That seems like a bad salesman, but it sounds like you guys knew, and you're like, hey, you're interested, and he just needs well, to we, do a research. We knew there was stuff. We didn't know what stuff. Right. You didn't yeah. know the treasure trove was back there, apparently. Like, like David. David used to work for this guy. Like several years ago, uh, and this stuff has been sitting around probably ten years or close to it, <laughs> at least. Well, I mean, they had a selection of stuff out when I started playing in 2014 or 15, but so this stuff's been sitting around, and and they weren't holding clicks events no. as of 2015 or so. So I mean, it's been at least seven years that this stuff's likely been sitting around doing nothing. So but you tipped them off. You tipped them off. Now I mean, and that's fine. So, worth money. so that's fine to me. That's fine too. Like, obviously, like I had rather 
buy them and makes money off of them, right? But at the end of the day, if this gets them listing them on Amazon or eBay or something, then at least they go out into the public, right? So this is some mm-hmm. like national treasure. You found the Knights of Templars hidden temple, all this rare treasure, but you don't want to keep it. You want to make sure it goes out into the world and right. Yeah, I mean, you it'd would, be you would have liked to keep it, but <laughs> you would have liked to buy it. But... No, I, yeah, I would have liked to have bought it, but I'm hoping that this triggers them to put it up on eBay or you know their Amazon store or something, right? Because right, although right. Uh, y'all are looking at playing APOC, I'm hearing a lot of people looking at wanting to play APOC going into worlds. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it'd be nice to have some of them out there, right? It's like, I look at it as like the Thanos collection, right? Um, like that was that, I don't know how more timely that could have been, been as a collection purchase. Um, and I feel like that this was really close to that, right? Like, I don't know. I helped, Mm -hmm. I helped spread the love of Thanos around the world, um, yeah. and well, um, yeah, you know, did, but you know, part of it obviously, what like that's kind of maybe the sales, maybe, you, yeah, think it like you maybe, maybe it out there, you uh, it, it you, you it wasn't like you gave them out for free, I guess is what I'm trying to maybe it's more like you spread the scourge of Thanos, yeah, you know, just, yeah, that's probably around. true, but. I mean, at the end of the day, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I would have. I mean, I would have bought them at a position to, you know, make some money off of them. But you know, more so than anything, right? Know. A lot of people wouldn't have been able to. You know, a lot of people don't have access to a set an apocalypse. I mean, they want uh, one, that's okay. So. They don't. They don't need him. He sucks. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't don't play him. Yeah, you say yeah. that. What's yeah. uh, what's your team for Saturday going into Huntsville, Jason? Oh, that's not really important to talk about, is it? That's that's what we're here for. Oh well, that's that's um, kind of why we three, run a three three hundred point legacy apocalypses, or, uh, something three, like that. Three one hundred point apocalypse, I think is what. You're yeah, saying. that's what I, that's what I said. Yeah, so um, they really want to unpack stuff. You're like, I don't really want to bring a big tub. It's like I just want just three figures. You know, you know, I haven't figured out how I'm going to transport this yet. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you don't need much just for the three, right? Like, you could just. I don't. Yeah. I don't have one, so I mean, he's pretty beefy, right? Like, he's a, he's a. I know he's a they, fossil. They don't, don't fit in my normal size box. That's my problem. My normal box that I would take with my team and my stuff, they don't fit in it. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's probably like, what, five inches tall? You know, something like that. Is he, like, is he like not as, like, uh, Dark Phoenix size? Not, like, tricycle yeah. size? Yeah, he's, like, Dark Phoenix size. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not huge, huge. Yeah, he's not, like, Surger. Okay, I didn't know how yeah. big he was. Like, because he's a... This one, this one wasn't the... Uh, this one, I don't I don't know enough about him so but he's I'm big about playing, he's I'm big about playing, so. right I mean he makes cool pogs mm-hmm. a, a lot of cool pogs yeah yep um yeah so um that's what we wanted to talk about a little bit is our world team progress so uh Jason and I are going to uh, Huntsville this weekend. Um, not a lot of folks. Uh, I don't know. Not a lot of folks saying that they're going to be able to make it uh, in my roll call thread. So I'm hoping it's not just Jason and I driving four and a half hours to. Um, to eat a sandwich at Lucky Dice. To eat a sandwich at Lucky <laughs> Dice and uh, yeah. play each other. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I unfortunately I only live two hours away, but it's the first weekend of like actual soccer games for my kids and it's like i, I know i'm gonna miss one for worlds anyway i don't want to miss the first one like their first they haven't played it in a couple of years so for me it's like ah, i'll just err on the side of caution and be a good dad and 
go to you know their first soccer games so, right yeah unfortunately um i mean it's not unfortunate right like i'm excited to go to their soccer games it's more unfortunate i can't go to the hunt school thing. right and then next weekend not this upcoming one but the next one sam and i are going to uh richmond kentucky for the uh clicks bait open yeah i go but that's my wedding anniversary weekend so i guess well, i have to choose the life so. what weekend is that uh Ne- next weekend, not the not this upcoming one, but the next one. Yeah, Labor Labor Day weekend. Yeah, Labor Day. Oh, weekend. Labor Day weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so I guess that's kind of the short update. Jason's trying three apocalypses. Alex is thinking about apocalypse, but Alex, mm-hmm. you don't really have a finalized team yet. I guess. Yeah. So I guess. I guess. Is, I guess, is the yeah, punchline me... right? Right. So, um, I guess to sum it up, uh, where I am. In world's progress so i still have obviously the celebrity spider family team like that i played at nats my nats team mm-hmm. yeah. how much needs to change on it um i'm probably getting rid of like little tk franklin on my sideline because i never found an instance to really want to play him and putting leech because there might be an option for me to carry leech across with lockjaw to shut some things down i haven't tested it that much um but just adding tarot cards and leech that's really all I would probably change on that team because the team is pretty optimized. Like, there's not nothing really new came out besides tarot cards and leech for that team. For Fantastic opinion. Four specifically, right? Yeah, for Fantastic Four because I'm not switching out Scarlet Witch. Uh, I'm not taking out Sarkarian Iron Man. Like, it's mostly leech is the only fan. I think the only Fantastic Four that came that was in that set, and that's because he was a legacy. Um, yeah. So I have that team in my pocket. Like I would feel comfortable going into Worlds playing that. Um, but I've been working really in depth on Merlin because I, I mentioned in the last podcast, I really like Merlin, um, but he's still very difficult to build with and uh, like insanely difficult to build with. But one thing that came out of it was I did uh, what I called the Merlin meter. And basically I started putting in uh, competitive pieces and said, okay, what is their minimum effectiveness when it comes to free actions? What is their ideal effectiveness? So, uh, for example, like someone like Master Mold, Apocalypse, the, uh, Kamish even, uh, Kamish is pretty low too. They don't have a lot of free actions that they do. Um, I don't think APOC has any, and that's between minimum and ideal. So like, in the ideal scenario, there's still not much you would do with him. But players, uh, figures like Sir Karen Iron Man, he is like a minimum three because you have sidestep, you have either outwit or perplex, probably, and then you're probably charge flurrying. Like that's ideal. Is that that's the minimum or that's the minimum mm-hmm. I want to be able to do with him. And so seeing that and seeing like, okay, you know, Merlin is a possibility. What could I build with that? Uh, like what what should i do and so i went away from sakari and iron man in this new team building went away from franklin because franklin is a two minimum because it's a free action to pick a power so like my nats team pretty susceptible to merlin not gonna lie like sakari and iron man's a three franklin is a two so that means like between getting them the powers they need i'm out of free actions um so I was looking at all the fi- all the figures that were just a zero across the board. That's Apocalypse, Emperor Gladiator, Lockjaw. Uh, they're all no free actions. Master Mold. Um, there's some Dooms out there that don't have any free actions that they could take outside of obviously like equipping them Dark Hold and stuff. I didn't count that part. Um, and so looking at that, looking at wanting to build Merlin, um, I was talking with PJ about the ruler version of APOC, and I was like, you know, I like that because I could try to either put the Doom Chases on there or try to play Merlin, like Merlin and Master Mold, uh, because I know they don't have a lot of free actions, and I know APOC doesn't have a lot of free actions. So I've got three versions of the ruler team, which is PJ's version, um, and, and the the I should say the ruler team the base core of it is Apocalypse, Venom Magneto, Scarab, and Magic Jaspers like those four 
and then you've got about 75 points ish to play around with other rulers so um pj i he's comfortable probably with me saying this is playing annihilation currently is what he's testing um i'm testing master Mulder merlin and then i'm also testing one of the doom chases so it's six i like it like putting it down on the field i mean apoc is pretty darn good um and i think yeah. ruler has enough in it to do ha, be strong enough to compete with things it's just whether or not i want to dare try merlin that's the big question right um, but either way I, i've got a couple weeks to kind of iron that down and then ultimately say and I, I i haven't set myself a date like if you guys were you guys are pretty comfortable like dan you're obviously very comfortable with what you're playing yeah i would say like at the very latest, you want to have a rough idea of what your core team is by like the end of the month. To give you two weeks to really fine tune everything. That's Ideally like, earlier. Th that's in like six days. Yeah. Like yeah. a week. You have a week to really iron out and say, okay, I know I'm going Thanos and these pe these pieces, but maybe I change up tarot cards or I change up fifteen points, you know, side yeah. pieces. But you want to know what your core is in a week, basically. That that would give you two weeks to iron it out, get a lot of play with it, um, get a lot of uh, hours under your belt t play testing the team and figure out exactly what tarot cards you want to play or what sideline yeah. you want. Yeah, so my team, if this doesn't work out this weekend, I just got to start all over, probably. Well, I mean... I don't know. I, I don't know, Jason. I mean, because you're playing three APOCs, though. Right, like yeah, yeah. Like, that's a little different. Like if it doesn't work out, I wouldn't then say, "Well, I'm going to abandon APOC." Because I think no, I mean, I'd be like, maybe that's probably be at least one. Like I'm probably going to play at least one, no matter what. Gotcha. I mean, yeah. I always have my miles. I have my miles, miles team in my back pocket. Like if I was really bad, like but if the triple one doesn't work out, then there's probably two thirds of the team I just gotta do over. Yeah, for me, it's just, I, I don't think there's going to be many Merlins. But I think Merlin could screw over a lot of teams. Now, a lot of if a lot of people switch to APOC, obviously that hinders his effectiveness a little bit. But I just, want, I just wonder how fatiguing it is to play Merlin all day. I mean, I don't know. From what reports I've heard from people, you know, he dies pretty quickly, but which he does, but that's... You know, it depends on play style, I feel like. Um, you just got to keep making those calculations all the time, keeping track of that on both sides. Right. It just seems like a lot a lot of mental work. Right. So, yeah, and, I just, a long uh, day. and just while we're thinking about it, Alejandro Cobos asked any chance we see Merlin in the tournament. So uh, this is a pretty good discussion for that. Yes, you would absolutely. I like. I almost guarantee you will see someone play him. Like, right. Oh, so, sure. so my best guess so far is... Um, and this is just from following Hero Clicks, is that there's only probably, hmm, and this I don't know. This feels like an easy guess, right? So this is not going to be super shocking here. Uh, uh, about, Dan, real quick, hold oh, on. But, uh, let's say it's let's say the Nats field is a hundred. Well, would that make it easier for you to make your? Yeah. So like yeah, hundred people on the field. Hundred people on the field. I think there's only one person that could win the tournament with Merlin. How many do you think are played? Uh, out of 100, mm, 10. Oh, I think it might even be less than that. Like, yeah, I think, I, I think 10 is high, but I feel like that that's a... Yeah. But I think I, there's I, I think I, there's only one person very specifically that could win uh, a hundred person, the 100 person tournament with... You're so Merlin. kind to, to mention me. Um... No. um uh, yeah, I, you're right, Alex. Um, I know, but I, I don't think yeah, you'll. You're talking about Tyler. Yeah, you're I'm talking about Tyler. Alex, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm actually talking about. I'm actually talking. <laughs> I'm actually talking about Isaac, but yeah, um, yeah. um, but at the end of the because I don't think Alex. I don't think you'll end up on Merlin. Um, if I had to guess, I don't see. I I, I stand by the statement I had last last episode or episode oh, the tear maker baby, like. I think if someone is able to efficiently play him, I think he's good enough to win. 
Like, I think putting him... Like, I'm 100% playing him in the Silver Age event. Like, he's going to become... That bad boy's becoming an Avenger, and he's going on my Avengers team. Like, that that's a definite. But for the actual, like, Worlds event... Um, I don't know. I, I need to play him more. I was actually supposed to, you know, Dan, you posted in our, our group about receiving. You got a Merlin in the mail today, I think. Uh, um, yeah, I did. I was supposed to receive one today also, but it's stuck at our, my local distri- distribution center. So hmm. I'm eager to get him on the uh, table and just see. Because I've been doing this spreadsheet where I just look at the numbers and say, you know, realistically, I've looked at all the Nats teams and was like, Isaac's Nats team does not like Merlin. Um, the Mystical team doesn't like Merlin either. PJ Scientist team. Why? Like why doesn't? Why doesn't um, the a bunch of Lokis like Merlin? I thought that was pretty straightforward. Uh, it's not just the Lokis. It's it's um, Blackheart. Blackheart um, only takes Blackheart. like one two minimum. Running shot EE and running shot is free. Second of guards free, right? Yeah, the second of guards a free action also. Oh, second of guard is free, and then the running shot is free, right? So it's actually two. Yeah, it's minimum yeah. two. Yeah, minimum two. But not, it's not terrible. Felix is a one minimum because he poofs around, he outwits. Like, so to be effective, Blackheart's a three to do the EE. Running shot and the KO. So right, so not, he could. That's detrimental. Yeah, but. I get it. Okay, because it's a free to sack the guard. It's a free to do the running shot, and then it's a free to do the EE. So he could be doing three, not inconceivably. Yeah, and to, to be clear, it, it's a free to do the EE because EE requires a ranged action, and when you do running shot, you could do range for free. If you're just doing running shot to make a regular attack. Like Pensai isn't a ranged right. action; it's just a passive effect. You can running shot make an attack, and it doesn't take a, ra- a right. free action. That's right. That's right. So just just to clarify, I've been doing a lot of looking into all the everything that uses free actions, and um, I that's why I feel confident that he's gonna be up there. I think there may be one Merlin that makes the cut, but it, like you said, it really depends on who the player is. That plays it and did they do the work and how efficient are they with their actions like, right so um all right um i have a story about my progress on my world's team Ooh, go for it so friday night um i got a unexpected chance to play under stress for the brad's event Okay. All right. right. So go on. Yes. So you um um, so I live out in the country for those that know, and I have two dogs, um, one that listens and one that doesn't. Um, the one that doesn't listen has to be kept on a leash, and for the past few days, um, she, um for the past few days past before the last Friday, she had been wanting to run. And when she runs, the other dog runs. Um, mm-hmm. And they don't come back, and they don't listen. Anyways, the dogs got out. And mm-hmm. they ran. And Pepper ran, the one that doesn't listen, and ran and ran. So we drove around for about two hours looking for them. And... Oh, no. We couldn't find them, couldn't find them. Talked to some of my neighbors, um, and never nowhere to be found. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go play. They'll come back, or unfortunately they might be dead uh, because I cannot find them. We put the shouts out on social media, um, with the, the local groups and stuff, and just nothing so i get a call because i do have tags on them from one of my neighbors and i send sam across the road or down the road and across the road where they have found one of my dogs and luckily her kids um luckily her kids were out 
chasing down our other dog who was in their backyard. So I say all that to say, I started the first round of Brad's event, worried about my dogs, sending Sam to go get the dogs, and watching Theo and trying to entertain him while playing Jackson's against Jackson. Um, so a lot of outside stressors like you might have in a room full of people uh, in a couple of weeks, a few weeks. So I, I hope not. I hope I'm not that kind of stressor. Well, it, <laughs> it, it, it is, it, it is a stress having people in the room and stuff, you know, and loud noises, right? It's not like I'm sitting here in my comfy, you know, comfy chair with nobody around. Right. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, that was pretty good practice. Um, so I played a little bit sloppily Friday, which I'm not terribly happy about, but I am happy that I was able to get done what I got done, um, giving my outside situations. So if anybody was watching the Brad cast uh, stream on Friday and wondering like, what is wrong with Dan? If you even noticed, um, it was because my dogs had escaped. Um, and yeah, it was not fun. So, um, but yeah, I am, uh, fairly settled on my team for worlds. You know, that's Thanos, Hope Summers, Molecule Man, Collector, Star Sapphire, and the Cloak. Um, and there is one change from Friday night, um, but I am playing the Knight of Cups, the Six of Pentacles, the Page of Swords, the Fool, and the Queen of Wands as my tarot deck. So, um, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Um, I, um, my weight, I've been maintaining my weight, uh, for those. Someone had asked me to give an update on that as well. Uh, weight's been doing good walking, but, uh, so I've been staying on top of the walking, staying on top of my stair climber, um, meeting my calorie burn goals every day on my watch, pretty much. Um, that's 900 to 1,000 calories of movement every day. Uh, in my 10,000 steps every day. So um, I'm feeling in good shape. Um, you know, we've got a plan to have plenty of rest at our hotel for Graceland. Um, and so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to play this team Saturday at Huntsville. And um, I plan on playing it for Richmond uh, in, you know, a week, you know, whatever, a week and a half. Um, and hopefully it does well. So I'm, I'm pretty, pretty set with Thanos at this point. So as if there was any doubt, right. And, you know, hopping in late is as thirdly, the... as thirdly apocalypse strife. Um, yep. So I was the, I was the original at least here. <laughs> um, I, I think you and Jason were probably on. I think you and Jason were on Apocalypse all at the same time. So. You were definitely the original non-themed. Like this is how I'm collector Apox. This is the way to go. One hundred percent was. I was talking about Apoc at Gen Con. Well, I was talking about Apoc before we went to Gen Con. You liar! <laughs> me and Dan talking about it on the way up there. Yeah, yeah, me and PJ were talking about it the day before the when I got there too. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that doesn't matter. About it, it's so. fine. Yeah, yeah. We, we could just say that Alex is the bandwagon jumper. Yeah, that's that's well, the point. Okay, you're, that's right. the that's the point you're really trying to get at as is that Alex is the bandwagon hopper. Okay. Oh yeah. No, no big point with that. So big point, and this is all PJ's fault. Everything's PJ's fault. In this of course. I was talking to him about that, and I was like, I really don't like jumping on the bandwagon. And he's like, Why <laughs> wouldn't you want to play a good figure? Exactly. And, and then I was thinking about it more, and I was like, Well, like that's a good it. question. No, well, no, I was thinking like, Damn it! It's like, how long have I been sitting here waiting for like a good Pog team? Like I've been like the Pog team. Person. I was thinking that too. It's like, and he's not playing it. Yeah, and then like Vulture crushed my spirit for years. Like Hawkeye started it, Vulture continued it. It's like, well, Pogs are just never, never. The Flappy gonna Boy work. can't hurt you anymore. And then like Wingard came out, and I'm like, well, that's like a Pog wannabe because he only makes two. Like that doesn't count. Like Pogs are you just can like keep making them and mm -hmm. keep throwing them out there. 
And so, like, I just didn't think about that. Um, I was just like, I don't want to hop on this train. And then I was like, ah, well, it w works with Merlin. Uh, it works with some other things I want to try. I guess I'll try. But I'm still not 100% convinced. He's, like, he is just also it. so much fun. Well, yeah, because Pog teams are fun. Like, Pog yeah. teams are a blast. That's why I love did everybody else talk about their teams already, or was no? You, 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 you know, you know, I was, I was after Jason and Alex, so you can okay. go ahead and talk about yours. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I also played in the Brad event on uh, on Friday, the same one that Dan had the, the issues with, but still won. Um, I went two and one, uh, missed second place by forty points. Uh, only lost to Josafa by five points, which I think with the change in the team, I win that that game. Um, so the team is Hunter Point Apocalypse, um, Commissioner, Molecule Man, uh, Mary Jane Watson, Moloid, uh, Professor X, Kate Pride, and Collector. So getting the plus one damage belt from Collector, plus 90 points in X-Swap. Uh, so gives me access to a Jubilee Venom Mag swap, gives me access to my favorite one, which is Venom Magneto 40 point multiple man. Um, because 40 point multiple man is worth being 65 points. Um, he's hard to kill, takes three at, at minimum three attacks to kill him. Meanwhile, he's generating new mastermind fodder for Apocalypse. Um, and then just, you know, collector given all the pogs plus one damage, plus Apocalypse uh, having empower and enhancement, along with the Moloid having empower, the zero point multiple man having empower, uh, can just generate a lot of damage. Uh, Destroyer on the sideline, obviously. And then my Tarot deck is the Force Blast card, the Precision Strike card, the Regen is free card, the Empower gives plus one attack card, and the Fool. <laughs> because I only run the Cloak, and I don't really care about it. Yeah, that's exactly where I was at on the Fool. Um as well. And Thanos is even better for the, the fool because it shuts off modifiers. Right. Yeah, and we didn't really... When we were talking about our teams, I didn't. we didn't really talk about in depth about... Well, I think, I think like, no. your team, Pacific 8, specifically, Alex, the tarot cards are in flux. Um, I don't think they're really decided yet. And then, Jason, I think you're running close to what yeah. uh, Az is running, right? Yeah, I've got I've got Page of Cups, which is the free regen, a Ten of Pentacles, which is hypersonic removes a token when you hit, Nine of Swords, which Precision Strike can't be reduced below two or evaded, uh, Queen of Wands, so you get plus one on the D6s because I got a bunch of D6 rolls, uh, and then the Fool, because I have no equipment. Yep. Right. Um, I have considered adding a sixth tarot card. Um which I am considering adding the Two of Wands. Which does what? Oh, hello? Alex, Jason? <laughs> what? You cut out on there. You, you all cut out. Um, Sorry, so the only character I have with Shape Change is Apocalypse. And what are you going to do? Go punch Apocalypse? Good luck. What's the uh, what's the two of what's the card you're considering adding? The adder? two the two of wands. The hit characters are given battle fury. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just good. Oh, go ahead. It, it's good because I don't really like the characters I have that make ranged attacks. If you hit them, they're dead. <laughs> um, right. So it doesn't matter if they get battle fury. Um. So it's just, and it's really good for like, it's, it's double-edged sword if I have the Jubilee and shoot somebody, give somebody else Battle Fury. And as long as I don't pick the wrong target, like their main ranged attack threat is not a threat anymore. Right. But if I pick the wrong target, then they can actually just go kill her. Right. I can't wait till we get to the point where like, do you think we'll get to the point where we'll know what all the cards are and we have them memorized? It's like I'm playing Ace, playing Ace of Cups, and it's like, what, what is, what is Ace? Of Cups? I know, yeah, yeah, yeah that one's, yeah, that one's one of the easier ones. But I know what most, like, I know at least the ones that I'm playing. I generally know the names of, but I get like cups, or I get cups and wands reversed, right? 
and I don't and I don't know why. Yeah, I think we'll get there soon, uh, you know, eventually. But I think for like purposes of the show, we'll always have to talk about what they're doing. So that'll probably help us memorize them. Yeah. Um, so, but um, so yeah. So far, the team's been testing very well, and uh, like the eight games I've played, Apocalypse has taken three damage total. Nice. Oh, I think it was my internet dropped out. That was. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm hearing as fine. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was it was my internet that dropped out. So luckily that doesn't affect the recording. So, <laughs> um, but at any rate, um, so let's talk a little the for so a little bit more worlds talk. Uh, so uh, we were supposed to record on Tuesday. Today is, um, Wednesday. Wednesday, and um, I like this question from Patrick Booth that came in late, but not too late. Uh, why did Wiz Kids choose Graceland as the place to hold worlds? Um, now, obviously, somebody told me this in 2019, um, but if you uh, put two and two together, you'll know why. Um, yep. If you just Google who owns the uh, Graceland Convention Center, mm-hmm. um, you will work up the ladder uh, to Joel Weinschenker. Um and then you will also see that Joel Weinschenker owns NECA. Yep. So that's, 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 it's there's just, your, it is the most cost efficient thing for that. Right. <laughs> yep. There is your answer. Um, yep. So. He also and it's actually a really nice convention center. It is, it is right. So yeah. Patrick asked, like, why not a larger city or one with international airport? Uh, Memphis is an international airport. Uh, just yeah. FYI, it's, um, it's real weird for me because anytime I go international, like I go to Europe, I actually fly away from Europe to go to Memphis to then fly back over my city of Chattanooga <laughs> to go to Europe because that's just. Generally, most of them come out of Memphis, uh, right? For where I'm at, so yeah, makes sense, but doesn't make sense. Yep. Um, but yeah, Memphis is an international airport, so uh, that is why, Patrick. Um, and it's very, it's very centralized. If you look at it just from the like from Google Maps, so you look at where Memphis is located in general. It's you think of oh, it's in the deep south, and it's like well. It's like it's actually like in the middle of of the northeast and the right. So like for like from like my perspective, right? Like it's drivable from Dallas, Atlanta, uh, Nashville, Knoxville, um, and then it's basically at the southern end of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So um, that's and that's really not too much of a stretch it's actually kind of at the southern tip of illinois right so that that covers chicago um so you're looking at like how much of your population centers of the of the united states are in that are in those areas um and that's that's why it's in memphis yeah and and honestly even like from where i'm from in, in southwestern pennsylvania um if you got a couple of friends it's not a bad drive. It's a real easy drive. Granted, it's a little long. It's like a 10-hour drive. But that's what I said. If you got friends, it's a good drive. Right. I, that's what I did in 2019 is me and a couple of local friends here drove down. And like and like Dan said, like Dallas, like so this is a location that's closer to Texas, which there's, you know, a good size player base in Texas. So mm-hmm. right. being in a location where it's like, hey, it's reasonable for them to go as well is bigger like way bigger than mm-hmm. just having it in the northeast like at, in philadelphia like you're really cutting off a lot of the country now does west coast still have to travel yeah they're probably yeah. always gonna west coast to. is always gonna have to yeah, yeah and, it, and if i and if i'm just guessing by looking at mr boost profile here uh it looks like he may be on the west coast so mm. um and that's a tough one right so like i, I don't know jason you and i mentioned this uh, i don't know maybe a couple episodes ago mm-hmm. um we didn't choose to be live and no. live in you know in the middle of clicks utopia 
Your um, ancestors came there and settled right. there for that. <laughs> right, for yeah. that reason, because they knew in 200 years their progeny would need to play hero clicks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yes, we are we are in a, much, a place where we benefit from all of that. We're, but We're um, geographically blessed. We are, but, like, at the end of the day, yeah. it's like, if it was in Dallas, like, I, I think there's, like, so many, uh, I don't, and I know Patrick didn't ask this question specifically, but uh, I think at the end of the day, it's like everybody wants the everybody wants Wiz Kids to come to their local Comic Con, you know, their regional Comic Con or whatever. And like, I get that, and I can understand that, but it's like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's like they're probably not going to hold worlds on the West Coast at any point. Yeah, and also- the, the time and the time that they held it in the Northeast. Everybody was very upset about that. Well, that's because it was in Philly, and that was that was just a bad start to begin with, because Philly. Right. In November, like yeah, Philly. In December. In, no, 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 no. You could have just left it at Philly, right. as a well, Pittsburgh. I mean, like, Philly. For me, it's like, well, hey, it's in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It was a real like, bad time. Yeah. It's like I, I can't travel then. Well, that year my daughter had just been born, so that mm-hmm. was like right. not happening either way. But. Being right. between two major holidays, people are using all their time off to go to holiday yep. stuff. They're right. not taking time for that. Yeah, yeah and I the would say thing... the the yeah, so so this is but oh, to wrap all this up and move on to the next question, I would say is uh, I know as you're getting ready to say something, so I'll let you say that here in a second. But okay. the Graceland Convention Center opened up May 23rd of 2019, and mm-hmm. the um, I don't know if we ever expressed this in earlier episodes. But it's all owned by Joel. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, why couldn't they get this together earlier? Why, why, I I will be very happy is at the end of Worlds this year, they announced 2023 Worlds. Now, is that, li- is that likely to happen? <laughs> Maybe at the fan appreciation night? Maybe, right? Is that likely to happen? No. no way. No way. <laughs> no way. But but you have to wonder a, why a, it doesn't happen. That but that's quickly. the problem. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, and here's the thing. Like, where I'm at in my company, if I need to talk to the CEO of my company, I have a pathway to do so without fear of retribution or, you know, a negative situation or... You know, it's all very positive, right? For but me, not to... everybody has that rapport, right? And well, no, I don't. It's not that a rapport, right? It's my company that I work for is set up to enable their employees for that sort of a success. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's what bothers me so much about the fact that we don't have worlds announced a year in advance. Is like if we don't coming out of this upcoming worlds is. It's a problem. It's a problem. Like yep. they need to fix that. That is a corporate well, issue. That is you, a cor- you. You know they can plan things out like this because they have to do that to make these sets. So it's they're capable of doing it. I mean, and, right? and they have to plan these out if they're going to the big conventions like San Diego Comic Con. I guess. Uh, well, okay. I think one thing I'm thinking about also is like. WizKids HeroClix World Championship or like having a big name perform at the convention center. Oh, you like the oh, play another Oak Ridge Boys concert was probably blocking. Yeah. Right, well, the, the week before, right. I mean, guys, all right, <laughs> calm down now about this one. But the week before we go, Daughtry is going to be there. Hey, so, I've oh, seen Daughtry yeah. live. I like Daughtry. I would go see that. I love I've them. seen them live. I think he's great. One month later, I am sad. One month later, Weird Al is going to be there. Oh, that would have been perfect to line up. I, got, he, I, I did see him live when he came in town. It's definitely like top three favorite concerts I've ever been yeah. to. Yeah. But so I've you heard know nothing what? I, I, I get all of that. But but we should, there should be better planning for sure. There should be, right. So, But like at the end of the day, it's like... That none of that matters, right? Like, this is part... This is, like, an opportunity. This is an opportunity for... Just Joel. I'll say it. This is an opportunity for Joel 
to leverage one of his companies that he owns to make even more money. Because yep. you got to remember, we were just in one of those rooms. I mean, Jason and Alex, you were there. Mm-hmm. I don't as I don't remember if you came to 2019 Worlds or not. I did. Um, but we were in one of those rooms. There are three rooms. Mm-hmm. Yep. So and Joel, could, and Joel is obviously big listener of the show. So Joel, yep. thanks for listening. Like at the end of the day, right? Like Joel can leverage one of his other companies to make him more money for really nothing. Right. It wouldn't cost them anything. It's like just treat your players, treat, have that company treat their players better, and they will buy more. Right. Yeah. Like, and so yeah. like, so like, and we're not like I'm looking at the Graceland calendar of events, and we're not even on the calendar. Like you could tell these are this is all music events and comedy. That why would they put here's a tabletop miniature champion? Why would they not? Because it's not like we wouldn't be on stage and nobody could really show up to buy tickets. Like Excuse you're not buying me. tickets. Excuse you're not me. buying tickets through this website. I I'll get on that, stage. That's for true. I could I'd get on stage. Not for the same reason as would, but <laughs> I mean, we're missing Ted Nugent, unfortunately. So, I don't care. I mean, Dan talking. could give a TED talk. He's tomorrow. Right. So. Yeah, I could give. I could give a TED talk. Yeah. Um. But anyways, that's. I will. I will leave it at that. Um. You know, I did get to sit down with uh with Justin a few years ago, and we got, um, the, we got the pics. We got the pics. Right. right. There's photographic evidence of that. Um. But I think my. Uh. I would like to sit down with Justin again. I would like to have a conversation with Justin again. But I think my new goal, my penultimate goal, is to have dinner with Joel. Uh, so invite him out to the Brazilian Steakhouse. Right. So dinner yeah, with sure dinner dinner where he wants to go. Right. Yeah. Uh if you if you just Google Joel, by the way, you'll see articles about Mr. Mr. And I don't know if I'm saying his name right, so um, Joel's or Joel's assistant. Um, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Um, but uh, yeah, his uh, his uh, the first article. If you're ever worried about um, how much money WizKids is making, um, the second or third article by just googling Joel's Joel's name is uh, Collectible Toy Makers Trust buys Miami Beach Mansion for sixteen million dollars. Yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> I will, I, so I, one thing I will say is, like, I think next year is going to be the determining factor of, like, setting a standard. Like, uh, the first real that, year coming out of the, out of the, the yeah, COVID. Yeah, because 2019, you, you even just said it, Dan, the convention center wasn't done until May. So, like, if they were thinking of Memphis, like, there was no place to hold it at Graceland yet. So that's why we probably got delays in 2019 that we did. This year, sure, they should have announced it earlier, but there was still, like, there wasn't major tournaments being run yet. It wasn't back to quote-unquote normal. So for me, next year, or when we get there at Worlds, like you said, Dan, like, now everything should be, knock on wood, fine for next year. That's right. There shouldn't be anything to hinder anything. There's no new convention center. There's no, hopefully, pandemic. So... Next year for me is where the bar is. Like, if they still delay and they still take forever, okay, that's absolutely like this was somewhat unacceptable, but I understand why. Next year, I don't see why they could do that. This year, yeah. they still had a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. That's yeah, right. It's, that's not right. Like they, it's not like they had tournaments go in like all year. It's they right. still had to come back into the scene. They could have, mm-hmm. but. We also don't know what's behind the scenes there. Especially based on, on their mission statement in the fan appreciation uh, panel. At, at Gen Con. Con. Yeah. So what I would say is benefit of the doubt, but what I want to see out of fan appreciation at Worlds, return to WKOs. Yep. At November 2022, WKO circuit starts back. It'd be great announcement of i want to see i want to i want to see i think the 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 community needs to see that they have november february may 
WKOs going to happen? I do. You, I'm sorry. I, I, real quick, I can yeah. absolutely see them say, "Worlds is going to." You know, this is the standard now. Worlds will be back in September. Not give us a date, obviously, because who knows what, what's going on. But like September, that's we're going to be back here next year in September. Right. Keep September open. Well, like if you well, if you gave me a second there, I was going to say a- after the WKO announcement, they say also Worlds back in Memphis in September. We're going to give y'all notice. Yep. Make Worlds a, in September is the end of your season. Make a commitment. Make it happen. Now, they got a little bit of benefit of the doubt. They did say at Gen Con better, um, better communication, communication. But, but we had to remind them about their announcement for Monday. <laughs> multiple things. It wasn't just one thing. It was multiple Right. Things. And since we recorded last, I don't know, uh, did, we, did we record after we got Design a Figure added back to the World's Prizing? No. Um, no, I think we were in the midst of doing that. Right. So um, we had to get that added back, and I don't think it's back for uh, Team Worlds Oops. yet. So, um, Which I, I think is – I'm kind of okay with that. Let me, let me ask you – sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I've interrupted you too many times. Go ahead. I was going to say, on the, on the topic of like the – basically the, the Hero Click season – of WKOs, you know, November, February, May, Worlds in September. Do you want to see Nationals back at Gen Con, or do you want to see Nationals back at Origins? Um, so, I taking out the convenience factor, that Indy is more convenient to me than, than Columbus. Than Columbus. Um, I think from a timing perspective, I do prefer Origins. Um, because it's it's earlier in the year because it's right before um it's right before retirement happens it's the largest amount of sets that we have at any given time during a year Mm -hmm. and worlds is a more limited amount of sets sure i get that um so Obviously, it be right after retirement? No. Uh, retirement. Nationals has always been generally been right before retirement. Was, was it retirement June 1st? It, July 1st. It was July. It hasn't been. It's July 1st. Or June 30th, July, July. 1st. Oh, uh, July. Yeah, but it might have been a year or something. There might have like 2016 or 2017. It like may have happened right in the middle of Origins even. Um, I don't remember that for sure. Don't quote me on that. But... Uh, I think with what we've gotten now, Jason, it should be the end of the month, um, so that Origins is pretty solidified in being um, the last big event with the most amount of sets. You're right. 2016, it was June 1st. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. That was the only time. I, that was the only time I went to Origins. So. Right. Yeah. June 1st was rotation. I do. I do kind of like having some. One thing I whichever they do. And either one they do, if they keep it at Gen Con, I think they absolutely still have to have a set go in between. Because I don't want a meta that goes from Nationals to Worlds and it's the same. Like, I well, the like retirement that... would happen in the middle. No, I'm saying at Gen Con it wouldn't. Like Gen Con, it was after rotation. The only reason it's different right now is of X of because Sword. X of Swords came out. Right. Sure. So if if they're like Gen Con next year, but we don't have any new sets in between, I, I mean, to me that doesn't sound like right now scrambling to build teams makes me more excited than to say, oh, I'm just going to play my Nats team again. Like I don't even have to think about Hero Clicks for like a little bit. Um, I'll just practice when I get closer to it. It's actually why I was more excited for Worlds than I was for Nationals once the Worlds announcements kind of came out. Right. Yeah. yeah so I. I I'm fine with either because I think both are are good times. Um, but uh, what you call Origins gives you obviously a more opportunity for right. change than going into Worlds. Right. I Makes agree. Sense. I agree. So um, potentially cap off that discussion with saying I do really greatly appreciate um, the announcements that they have made. Um, 
I so very much sincere, sincerely appreciate the announcement that Ed Levy made earlier this week about the Worlds list is not going to change between now and Worlds. Uh, because they did say, they just, uh, when we reminded them in our Facebook group to do that, uh, they just posted the Worlds legal list, which was just the modern list. And the modern list states that Exasword Slop Month 1 didn't state that specifically, but based on their guidelines, Exasword's month one, Exasword slot month one would be legal for worlds. So, but Ed clarified for all of us that uh, it is not going to be because it's not going to change. So, yeah, um, I, I'll, I'll re emphasize this multiple, multiple times and always throw my name in the hat multiple, multiple times. They need just a face slash social media manager period like a face that gives the answers to things and is able to say that's a wonderful question i will reach out to the team and i will get back an answer to you like they need to have someone that does that for the community yeah. not just hero clicks dice masters anything like the, the behind the scenes everyone kind of unofficially does things occasionally like it, it's not working they need to just have a <laughs> yeah, a lot of companies do that. A lot of companies that make games do that. Right. So it's, I think it would be beneficial. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about worlds. Um, Clay, uh, Cody Burton, how impactful do you think the cloak will be will be at worlds, and how teams might try to counter equipment builds? Uh, well, the fool, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, how impactful do you think the cloak will be? Uh, I mean, the cloak was on one, two, like four, five of the top eight teams. Hey, everybody. Just want to have you uh, check out the uh, link in bio for Oxit. The Heroclix Cafe is a great place to buy, sell uh, Heroclix. Uh, specials and special events are often ran. Uh, check out our friends in Oxit, link in bio to join and get you some great deals on some hero clicks. At, at Nationals, so I, I don't I don't think it'll be over on half the field at Worlds in top eight, very likely. Or if it's not if it's not on the main force though, uh, it would be on Jimmy Jasper's sideline. So it's hard to measure impact for support equipment. Because it's like in the in the grand scheme, is it on every team? Sure, is it used heavily? Sure, with Sarkar and Iron Man, absolutely. But if it's one where it's like I put it on Collector and he like occasionally carries people around, well, his impact is much lower. So it's hard to kind of measure that. But I agree. I think with Mad Jimmy, it'll his the play of Cloak will go up, or if someone figures out Monarch, right? Yeah. Nobody's making that character work. Nobody's making that work though, Alex. Uh you're gonna you're gonna laugh until someone, you know, I charge you with Sky Tyrant and then I just sidestep and bring him back to my starting area. Or mission point you. I'll mission point you to death. Oh gosh. <laughs> um so but yeah, I think the fool is the best counter. Um and what I like about the fool uh when it comes to the emotional modifier and man, it just makes me so pleased. Like, I just, mm, mm, I just love it because the emotional. So when they, when you when something says that you can't use equipment, right, it negates that effect, right. So if you mind control somebody with the emotional modifier, it resets their choice and they have to choose again. Same thing when you mind control somebody that has the dark hold. They have to, they lose their perplex, and then, or if they chose perplex, they lose their perplex, they lose their outwit choices, and then they have to repick which two powers that they want to pick, assuming it's on like Scarlet Witch. So the fool zaps that, just like a mind control would, and I get the benefit of the emotional modifier the turn that I pull it. Um,. It basically shuts off those equipments for two turns. It does. It basically... Well, it doesn't shut off because they can use the perplex and stuff the next turn. No, because uh, they can't use the free to pick the powers anymore. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so it shuts it off for that turn, and then 
they can't pick powers on their turn and then it comes so you get you get two turns of it being off right that's right yeah yeah exactly you're you're saying it correctly um so that's super great for the emotional modifier so i got two turns to make it happen um yep. It's great if there's a lot of Scarlet Witch or Agatha just shutting off the Darkhold for two turns. It's great. Yep, shutting off, and it, specifically for Thanos, right? Shutting off the emotional modifier for two turns. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 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 So, yeah. man, it just, mm, mm, just... And that could be half the game. <laughs> it is. It, it could very well be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that is, actually, that's an interesting topic that I've, I've been learning with now that we have Tarot. Uh, you get to actually see how many turns you get. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's typical, I, uh, I've typical... been getting pretty consistently five turns, yep. five six turns. I do too. Um, so, um, I, guess, I guess that's a, a, another good question. Of people have been asking whether they're going to extend time at all because of tarot cards. Have you guys found tarot cards? Now I know most of you are playing online, so that kind of makes it. They're a little clunky online. They're a little yeah. yeah the problem with online is that you have to recall the cards, and then you have to reshuffle the cards, and then you have to redrag yeah. out the cards. Um, but no, I, in person, I, I don't. It hasn't been really. It's, it's gonna really, be. It's gonna be quick and easy. Okay, that's what I thought, and that's well, why I, I... there you should be able to see the cards on the opponent's build sheet, make some sort of determination of what happens with your strategy. I do see that they could, they do add time to strategy thinking, but you get to see their card on your turn, or you get to see yep. their card on their turn, and you get to plan for your turn based on their card. You should know what cards you have, Yep. and like for me, like if I know that my fool hasn't come up yet, and I need to not be planning my turn to use my sidestep. I think um, uh, one thing I needs to be talked about more, I think, in the community and needs to be addressed at the tournaments is the time between rounds. I think there's so much emphasis on we don't want this tournament to go long. Like, where can we shorten time? Okay, post the pairings and go. But one of the more important times is setup. Yes. We talked about this before. When was the last time you actually like verified a build sheet, looked at their build sheet, looked at everything they had, made sure everything made sense on the on the board? Like you need to do that for tarot cards. Like you need to make sure. Once again, this is a thing on Facebook. You need to make sure they don't have a march somehow. You got to make sure they're doing things appropriately, and that's right now put into the game setup phase, which is already so short and people just don't care about. Like, no one pays attention to it. Like, no one even does the, I'm first player. I put my pieces down first. Now you do yours. Like, everyone oh, I... throw uh, It depends on the matchup, obviously. But I do that. A lot of people, like, just throw their stuff on the map. And, like, they do. Let's go. Like, so that's one one aspect of like okay gen con really efficiently run but that's because you know there wasn't a ton of people smaller size yeah i don't want them to rush in between rounds for the sake of oh let's get through this faster if that means we lose some of the setup time um and uh, but the problem is that (laughs) requires players to also understand you need to get your stuff down we need to take the time to look at the build sheets Mm -hmm. and verify your opponent's stuff like make sure that there aren't markings or there's you know everything is how they should be the players need to be punctual yeah yeah now at, at worlds they've already you know they've already said there's a build verification part as opposed to what was at nats so they are verifying builds but right. but you need to you need to verify your opponent's build right and yeah because there's there's nothing mm-hmm. to say like they get it verified and they don't switch stuff out not to say people do that, but the, the well, possibility it's also, is there. It's also, there's nothing to say that the judge didn't make a mistake. Right. Right. Yeah, where everyone's, yeah. you know, no one's infallible. So. Right. So I would say make sure that, you know, to improve things between rounds, right, know where the bathroom's at, you know, know mm-hmm. how to get in and out. Um, if, uh, if it's in the same convention center, it's literally you walk out, make a left. That's right. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, have have a plan for drinks. Have a plan for food. 
right? Um, you know, just be ready for all of that. And, and, um, and then, and, and then, if you need to, like, and I would say, like, if you're a smoker, like, um, here's my thought. Like, so uh, I work in a technical field, um, and oddly, a lot of telecommunications folks smoke. Um, so I, I've like, I've dealt with smokers. Shocking. <laughs> I've dealt with, I've dealt with smokers over the years. So what I would say is. This takes a lot of self-reflection. Um, understand your um, addiction to uh, the nicotine and how you can ride that high as you need to throughout all of the day. I do the same thing with my caffeine intake. Um, I think the vast majority of Americans are addicted to caffeine. Um, so understand how your body reacts to the caffeine or the nicotine and how to manipulate yourself, uh, manage yourself throughout the day, and make best use of that. So that you're not rushing outside to smoke because you're getting the jitters, or you're crashing because you took in too much caffeine early in the day, when you should have taken half the amount of caffeine. Um, So, just a thought to, like, get yourself through the day. And to piggyback off of that, like, even if you don't smoke or you're you're great at otherwise same goes for like if your game ended poorly last action you lost by five points like you're just so high adrenaline coming out of that game and it didn't work out for you or it did work out for you don't let the last game start impacting your next game to where you're just like either angry and you're just like getting your stuff together for the next game and you're not even taking the time to look at build sheets check everything or for, those... forget your pieces, right? Right, right. So, like, so I tell you what I do in that case, right? Like, I have one of those cool hero clicks trays. I've had it for several years, but I'm able to go five pieces on my main force: one, two, three, four, five. And then I, I don't even think that it's you know Thanos collector uh, hope. It's I, just counting one to five. It's counting one to five and visually impacting what that team looks like on visually visual impact of what that team looks like on a tray what it looks like here i put the things back in the same spot on the tray i i do that too right and then i have my you know three or four three to five sideline pieces you know boom boom back and forth uh mm-hmm. and then same thing with my tarot cards i'll do the same thing so yep. Um, yep. very uh, important piggybacking piggybacking, piggybacking on, off of uh, off of yeah. alex's point right um I actually had a conversation with with somebody about that uh that kind of like riding the adrenaline um and not letting it affect you and and this is a player that that like i i know consistently like kind of lives on or harps on like the dice so i kind of in a truck i'm like hey i want you to do well at worlds this is what i want you to work on letting that stuff go yeah um like between there's like don't even worry about it. Like if you if you have that those those bad adrenaline highs, just try to like let it wash off you, like water off a duck, um, and go just go into the next game clean slated. Yeah, so. and it, it's even worse now because we got tarot cards, so like an added element. Yeah, a variance. Yeah. So. Yep. 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 So. Very interesting. Um. All right, um, world stuff. Let me look at these questions again. Um, I think there's only one more particular worlds related question. Um, we've talked a long time about worlds, so um, team worlds. Clay asked about team worlds. What team combos are you thinking about? Assuming we are given a brick per team and the set is X per swords, you should have one full set of commons, 75% of uncommon, seven rares, three super rares. And he didn't say this, but potentially one Chaser Prime to choose from. Not a guaranteed Chaser mm-hmm. Prime. X-Men or is potentially a... a Chase and a Prime. You're right. X-Men is an obvious one. Yeah. How about a recruiter team? Robots or Horsemen? Uh, what are your must-play top pieces? Um, I will I will, I will, will just go ahead and say this. Um, and uh, Jason, you're playing with me. So um, yeah. I, I took Clay's question and I wrote down a bunch of notes in my brain. Um, Mm -hmm. that, Hey, maybe we need to look at a recruiter team or robots or horsemen. And, um, um, so like, Mm -hmm. um, Matt, my answer to Clay's question is to just read Clay's question. 
Um, cause yep. it, 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 Clay's, Clay's question is self answering. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, just from, I, just from, just from Seal, but just from Seal, I've already played like Abigail Brand and X Men. Like, is a good team yep. that you could build probably fairly easily. But Abigail's a super rare, right? So that's just super rare. That comes down to yeah. RNG. Uh, a great figure a to sort of look at is the Jean Grey, the psionic. Like projection, yeah. Jean Grey. He's got a lot of good support power. The, the the fake danger room. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So I think what mm. I see, and I and I have been doing, I have been doing some research for this, but uh, as since especially since Clay asked his question, um, which was very very nice of him to ask it in such a detailed way, um, I think that you end up getting one horseman team because you're likely to pull. Uh, war and death. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So th- they're the rares with the equipment. Yep. So that's a pretty good uh, thing to pull those two together. Um, the problem is the robot team doesn't add up to a hundred point or three hundred points without Nimrod the Lesser. Right. Without Nimrod the Lesser uh, or Orcus soldiers. I mean, I guess you might be able to get there. Between Omega Sentinel, uh, Mystique, and Sebastian, uh, the Juggernaut f- Apocalypse, and the I, Fury. I, I, still, I still think we we need to just do like a uh, not a tier maker, but like a live. Yeah, I primer, mean, just, like a sealed primer. A, I've got a, no. We get a brick, and we just you know, Dan opens one and says, "Here's our pulls," and we like build live what we would do in this scenario, and right. then go into certain pieces. Because, like, you know, we do the tier maker, which is just for modern building, but, like, pieces like Orcus Soldier is pretty good for a sealed event. Mm-hmm. 25 points with the three damage. Now, it's not a lot of range and whatnot, but having range combat expert and running shot, mm-hmm. great for Hope Summers. Like, I played him and yep. Hope Summers to give her running shot and range combat expert because her, her 10 attack is pretty sad. But um, there's... There's a lot of combos. The one thing my advice is, um, don't try to make Absalom Mercator happen. It's not going to happen. Right. Like, He's great. It's it's not. If you play him, you're playing him literally to be a support piece. Right. Or to give like hope. Excellent. I'm playing. I'm playing him with somebody with Mastermind. <laughs> I tried that, and it just doesn't. Like I, I played it locally. We we each pulled. Uh, we did three boosters. So I had hope. I had hope and Absalom. I was like, this is perfect. I'm going to play hope at 100, which I know is not the ideal way, but I was like, I'm going to do it anyway. I can seal. That's fine. And yeah. it's just like, you just ignore her. You don't go for her because you don't want to go to Absalom. And he also has impervious. So it's like only penetrating damage is really going to do much to right. him when you mastermind to him. So even as a mastermind fodder, he's not ideal i guess right. that's sure. that's why that's why i say don't try to make them happen man it looks cool but don't man i think i i would like to uh thank clay in advance um uh, for jason sam and i uh if we do well at um team worlds um clay i i, I would like to thank you now because the discussion we have on the way down to memphis will probably be around team sealed and you're right. Robot could be a very mm-hmm. possible team. Mystique, Sebastian are in the boosters. Yeah. Orcus, Soldier, the Fury, and Omega Sentinel are as well. And you're most likely to get Apocalypse, Juggernaut, one of the Nimrods, Wizkid, or Arcade. Yeah. And we, uh, the that, brick we that just recently opened has had a prime and a chase in it. So right, but there are bricks that have no prime or chase. Right. That, I mean, ob- obviously, if I open a brick with a prime and a chase, more right. likely than not, the other brick doesn't have the either. Right. Um, so, but yeah, I think robots is really good. Um, surprisingly well. I was I was was questioning like, what is he talking about? Um, but uh, yeah, oddly enough, that is that works out really well. Um, I think Mis- Mystique is just a must play mm-hmm. in general for Seal. Like, she's not like, bad. Yeah. She she's the perfect tie up piece to just throw out there to to just literally tie them up and it just the set doesn't have a lot of precision strike and 
battle fury to just be able to get through her easily. Right. So. But I, I do think we, we just need to have an episode or a, a yeah. live stream where we just go over it more. Yeah. And then X-Men Recruiters, pretty easy to do, right? Um, mm-hmm. With a brick. Um, and uh, the rare Magneto, I think you're hoping to pull him, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, he's good. The the black suit Magneto? Yeah. Yes. He's, that's, he's, that's he's really uncommon. good. The uncommon Magneto also. Is oh no, I was bad. thinking of the uncommon Magneto. I'm thinking of the uncommon, but the black the black suit rarity is good as well. Yeah, right. running shot, pen blast, enhancement sees through characters. Right. Yeah, and the, the decrease within range of line of fire to impervious For... change of super senses. Yup, mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, yeah, he he's probably one of your must plays if you pull him. Just right. because of everything he brings to the table, and he's a Agreed. flyer. There's not a yep. ton of flyers. Not a ton of flyers in the set, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, and then if you get one of the chase, I think like uh, I just pulled, uh, I just got the apocalypse chase today in a couple of loose boosters. Mm-hmm. Um, like obviously that's a must play. Um, I think annihilation is probably one of the better chases of the pool. Right, Lady Rose. Any, anything that anything that generates pogs is just insane. Right. Um, oddly enough, Saturn might be one of the harder ones to build around, but she's a really good chase. Um, yeah, because her keywords are fairly limited. Yep. Um, you're likely to yeah. not be able to back her up on like Excalibur or something. Um, I think she's probably your. I feel like it when it comes to sealed. She can probably hang well enough on non-theme. Yeah, there's usually always the one non-theme team. Like, you have two that are like, we got it, we got X-Men, we got Brotherhood or something, and then it's like, all right, I'm the non-theme that has just the generally good pieces that wouldn't fit on the other two pieces. So she fits in that category, because you could play her with, like, a, what, a Tarot? Or, uh, not Tarot, uh, who's the other the other one? That Roulette, that yeah. has the prop, if you need to have a prop. Or something like that, or magic, or something that gives you the props you won't have from theme team. Like there's there's prob in the set, so like you can mitigate not having theme team props. Yeah, but I would there's, say there's actually, I would there's say actually like nine pieces with Excalibur. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I was looking at that. So, but what like what I'm thinking is like I think you could probably go in ahead of time and almost pre-build teams. Yeah. So, so like, that's the benefit of having the sealed brick, right? I like that. I like that a lot. Gosh, it is really good. I uh, like again. Thank you, Clay. Like I'm, like I'm doing the, the like uh, the my hands, my hands together and bowing my head. Like thank you. Um, so like maybe like, I know uh, we've got what four teams entering, three teams entering team sealed. Um, but like maybe you yeah. desi- maybe you designated maybe you designate somebody to play robots. Like I'm thinking like Jason, maybe you start researching robots, right? And then we figure out what we're gonna give mm-hmm. Sam. Like maybe we give Sam the X Men team and I'll end up taking whatever pieces are left. I think I think the I don't know if I think teams from that standpoint. I think I feel it more of getting reps of team building it. Is what right. I'm thinking more of. It's more yeah. of guys. Let's sit down for 30 minutes and let's go to rounds. We'll get the listing of cases people open and like blindly choose a brick and say this is what we got. We now you can't do the booster like the comments and uncomments, right? But you know what you got top end. So I guess that is the tricky part because we don't know the percentages or whatnot of like you would have to just go buy more product <laughs> just to see. Yeah, like. Well, I've got a I've got a case or that I unboxing videos. You could go to all the unboxing videos that were done. Right. Just look at a brick unboxing and see all the individual pieces that were pulled. Right. So, um, all right. Well, let's keep moving on. I, I that's I did not expect Clay's um answer to be so thought. Per- great great yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, great question, Clay. Um, so. Um, let's move along here. Um, so Richard Z, I think the one thing we won't be able to help out with this week, 
Are you planning on reviewing the slot figures or discussing Battle Royale strategy this week? Uh, no. Um, um I, I would... I, the, the, only cat, the only thing is we, we could... Like, if we do an episode where we're doing sealed and, like, we're opening boosters and team building, we could maybe look at, like... We can mention some BR related things, but not BR as far as the slop, but more BR as in, right. in the main set. Yeah, we're, we're definitely we're not set. doing any of that this episode. Yeah. Oh, so, not this episode for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I I understand where you're coming from. You could probably would you you would like our opinion on the slop and the battle royals, and mm-hmm. uh, I would say for Jason and I, we aren't getting to play in month one this week. Um. No, but we are. I already played in two entire month, three months at Gen Con. Yeah, you did. Maybe, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe we find some time to record on the way to Huntsville and talk about it a little bit. Um, we could. I, I would love to do that. I mean, right? We can probably I think do I, that, but I, I, we're not going to be able to get it this week for the immediate folks playing in month one. So, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, um, my apologies. Um, yeah, our our uh, our, our kit got uh, delayed coming in this right. week. So, um, uh, so I, I'm trying to think of just some of the few these easier. Uh, Amato asks, "When will WizKids give robot keyword TK? Their heinous neglect must end." Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what's coming up. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what are some figures that aren't being played or talked about much anymore that you think are really good and can be very effective from Jack Smith? Like in general? Are we talking worlds? Yeah, for, for worlds effective, I guess. Um, oh, maybe Gladiator? Maybe. Do we think Gladiator's just bad now, or... Uh, the problem it, it, is, is he takes the prime. I get that. The problem he's is not bad. he's not bad. It's just the the primes take up. He's like so far down on the amount of good primes. I I looked at him briefly because of the Merlin meter, uh, because he just doesn't give a crap about Merlin because he does running shot pensai. So like, who cares? Um, so I looked at him briefly and. It, it's just we're we've entered a meta where it's like you have to have multiple hits like you one big hit doesn't really cut it because there's a lot of rollouts there's people with stock clicks there's things that reduce penetrating it and bird gladiator included his downside is the same downside he has always had that he lost the ability to get rid of which is that he only has one target yeah yeah uh, yeah, it's if he had a way to get multiple attacks, then maybe he would be better. But, um, but that doesn't mean he's bad. But I don't know. I was trying to. It's just, I think I feel like for like what he's doing, he's just been outscaled. Like he's an attacker that's hard to kill because he has like an outwittable mastermind. Um, but now we have like characters like Apocalypse, who also have an outwittable mastermind and it's better and he makes multiple attackers well i mean i wouldn't put him in the same field but yes i get i get what you're saying as like you weren't playing emperor gladiator for the like emperor gladiator stopped seeing play because he lost the power gem like he just reality oh yeah well you played reality but people also played i thought power gem to give him like a crazy high de- damage. I I definitely did that. But now we got Collector, who could help boost that back up. Not the same, but better. So I think Gladiator is kind of fringe, a little bit below fringy, but he might be one that I'm. I, this is a hard question, I think. Just to be able to give an answer of, oh yeah, this piece is low key better because I don't think any of us are. I wish I, I want to play Juggernaut. He has he just does good stuff, but he's so damn expensive. Oh, Tyler, not yeah. Because he stops perplex. He stops. Stop. He gets through stop clicks. He has battle theory. 
gets through super senses too, right? Yeah. He just does so much. He wait, just goes wait, and wait, the Scarlet wait. Witch. What? How does he get rid of super senses? He doesn't get rid of super senses. He gets oh, yeah, I thought he did. Too. No. No. Mm -hmm. He he ignores conflicts. He turns off perplex. Stops leadership. Like you can give him exploit now, but there's still no flurry, unfortunately, to give to him. Right. Uh, the exploit is a problem, and uh, so is the the super senses. Yeah, he does a lot of nice other stuff though. Right. Oh, I I I thought leadership was super senses on his power. Oh they yeah, can't no. use leadership for some reason. Right. Yeah. So um, I, I will say one other answer to his question. They've always been there, but only very select people play them. Like I feel like the Doom chases. Like you, people talk about them always being there and playing, but no one ever plays them except TJ. It feels like, and maybe like one or two other people but they just don't see as much play and they haven't for a while but i think I feel, they are i feel like there was good. a bunch of thanos doom that nats was was there not uh there not. there was a few but it wasn't a bunch yeah you're right but you're right though as there was quite a few and we'll find that. I was trying to give an answer. Where's your, no, no, your but, guys' answer? Uh, no, no. I was. I would say, uh, no, Alex. I think your answer is fine, um, because I think that it could be very good with APOC. APOC enables so, a lot at, at, now that I've been practicing against him. Yeah, I think a character that like doesn't see a lot of play anymore that I'm like surprised of, and I know there was one in top eight at Nats, but it's still kind of an, an outlier. Is Spider Hammer Eye? Yeah, yeah. He's, he not, he didn't get worse, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, he didn't get worse. Uh, Obviously, the animal team got worse, but he did not get worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I smacked that ham around like I made him into bacon. <laughs> um, unfortunately, unfortunately, just... unfortunately for Joe, it was. You know, it, it's almost like meta wise we've everything's still hyper alpha but it's not hyper close alpha outside of like flash like flash is it now i feel like sky tyrant it's just there's but there's not nearly as many sky tyrants like i, I agree one but and he's always a threat but there's not nearly as many sky tyrants yeah i think there, sky so tyrant good. makes a play back for worlds um because he might, be, he might be a good answer for Jack, uh, Jack's yeah, question. Yeah, I think so. Ah, oh, I get that one. Yeah, yeah, I get that one. That. You, uh, Alex, you went with Doom Chases. Um, Jason went with uh, Juggernaut. As went with um, Spider Hammer Eye. I'm going with Sky Tyrant. That's fair. And I feel like like Tyrant's big thing that was keeping him away for a while was like the Fantastic Four, like high defense team. That's not like not the Fantastic Four isn't around anymore, but like there are more teams now that it can actually fight. Right, and I would say too in general, the fact that there was Fantastic Four and now there's all there was also Demon and Armor teams. Mm -hmm. Um, the the fact that the the scientist team I think might almost be into unplayability at this point. Um, yeah. Because of just and somebody out there could be like, well, I'm going to prove those guys wrong, and that's fine, and you and you could definitely do that. Um, but like at the end of the day, it's like that team takes a lot of free actions. Yeah, uh, that team does not want to see an opposing Merlin. That team does not want to see a tarot cards. Um, there's quite a few that mess it over, um, which could be a good segue to talking about tarot cards. Look at you. I'm so proud of you. Wow, I didn't even try. Um, I know. It, it, once you start doing it, it just it's natural. Right. It's like dad jokes. It's just natural. So, um, Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. Um, Alf, yeah, that's Alf, Alfredo. Yeah, okay. Um, what are the must-have uh, tarot cards to own? Well, that is our All next of them. section. All of them. Next segment, yeah, uh, and then Carlos V. Um, Carlos V. Best Tarot for Leadership and Mastermind Build, specifically APOC. I think he's meta. He is. 
Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, so we know, I know we talked about it on our set review, so we don't have to go over each card super specifically, but we can say from our practice and what we've seen, has any of our opinions changed? And we can do this quickly. Um, strength. I've seen strength played. That's attack rolls of 1-1 are not critical misses, and attack rolls of doubles that would hit our critical hits. Um, I don't think you want to play that card because it's very bad against you. Yep. I uh, I played somebody where I was able to one-shot their Mimic because of that card. J- Jackson, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, so, um, now the mission point ones, maybe we can answer this one too. Garrett S. asked, are mission point teams becoming semi-viable? So many mission point characters are robots plus the tarot cards. It's not definitive, but our next card here is Temperance says when a standard character successfully breaks away, that character controller gains one mission point. Um, I think if you play that one if you're not, if you don't have a major arcana that you like, you just play Temperance. And yep. I, yeah, that's why, like Jason was right, you want almost all the cards. Because sure, there are bad ones, but there are, you also want cards that just don't affect that's how as builds right right? like you want cards sometimes that you're like i want this to not affect me at all right as a majority of the mission point ones are though i do kind of want to see if someone accidentally loses because of mission point (laughs) right i don't think that'll happen no i don't think so either but to answer his question i think mission points is closer and they continue to get closer but like Merlin teams, it's got to be like, like very, very, like a lot of time and effort, and it still may not pay off. So it's right. still a little too risky for certain people. Right. Um, the devil, uh, you probably don't want to play that uh, in general. No, I don't think so. That card's spooky. Yeah. The the fool is great if your team does not rely on equipment. Um, and the High Priestess is very powerful for you, but is also very powerful for your opponent. I do like the High Priestess as a very good second card to the Fool. Yep. Yes, I agree. Um, also, also a potentially spooky card because of Thanos. Yes. He likes that card. I did get to pull off the four gem turn. <laughs> I did use the four gems. Uh, it was great. It was fantastic, as you can imagine. Um, the moon uh, is probably irrelevant, but if you would like to include an irrelevant card, uh, you can do that. I I don't know if it's completely irrelevant because of how much perplex there is out there. Like it is, but when you're getting later in the game, like I don't I don't know like. Do you think it would inhibit anybody using Perplex at all? No, not unless you had this a specific team with mission points. But I don't know. Like you're going to have to draw the breakaway one. You'd have to play all of the mission point cards, and those are only in major arcanas. Mm-hmm. So probably not. Um, Makes sense. It was just a question I was curious about. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, Wheel of Fortune when the character attacks uh, I think it's another thing to know but not really um, Ace of Cups Super Senses um, now are you, any of y'all playing the Ace of Cups? no uh, nope hold on hold on I have my no. list of for my team uh, I, yes I, I think that so Again, Alex nailed it on the head, at least for me. I build very, very net neutral. I don't want cards coming up that can inhibit me. Uh, and that card could, in certain matchups, can just mean that I don't really get to play my turn. Right. Yeah, for for me, because one of the pogs for Apocalypse has Precision Strike, right? Um yeah. For me, for me, it's like I did the math. 
and I was like, how many on my team actually have super senses that matters? And I'm playing Scarab and Mad Jim. Like, I want Scarab to survive. Like, and Venom Mags. And Venom Mags. So half of my team has super senses. Um, that puts Ace of Cups at least on the table for me. Um, does it suck if they have a bunch of super senses? Sure. But does that mean my pieces, like, it, it's like, it helps me. Maybe it helps them less than it helps me. Right. right like so for me for me i actually have it on the list over than some of the other cups because some of the other cups just doesn't doesn't help me very right much at all. like the five of cups i mean so like when we say that these car like it's the esd card like so it's not game defining right i, I don't think you include that one if you're wanting your tarot deck to be um definitive right um Six of Cups is the barrier one. Um, maybe. I feel like this one... I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I think it's very situational because the best characters you want it for can already do it. Right. Molecule Man can already do it. Um, mm -hmm. Star Sapphire and, like, Mad Jim already do, like... Well, Star Sapphire, you just do her four barrier, but, like, Mad Jim can do two and four... So those are already separated, and it's probably separated enough. And that's it, just not reliable enough. Because you uh, still need to be able to see the 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 non-adjacent ones. Right, yeah. And I, I honestly don't know how often you really need them to not be adjacent. Yeah, you're like, no, the turn that you need them to not be adjacent is going to be the turn you don't get the six. <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, basically. It, it's just when I'm thinking of bu building barrier, it's like, well, that's because I'm blocking my team in i want all the squares covered i know there's instances where that right you know but it just doesn't seem worthy of a tarot card right to, to make that happen agreed and plus if you're worried about needing to use the six of cups just add more barrier to your team yep that's uh that is a solution just that i hate generate more barrier I hate barriers of um, power. I think it should go away. I can tell you that that is my solution for my world's team. Um, the answer is 16. Yep, that makes sense. And I've done 15 in a turn. Yep. Yep. Because I needed yep. to. Yep. But 16 is the answer. And... Uh, it feels good. Yep, that's why I think barrier needs to go away. Yeah, you're fine. No, you know what? I am I'm wrong. I can do 20. I yeah. thought you were going to say I was. Uh, you were wrong that a barrier shouldn't go away. Well, you're wrong that barrier shouldn't go away. It's fine power. But yeah, it's a, it's a, hope, it's a needed counter. I yeah, think. hope Thanos. Yeah, hope, it's just hope there Thanos. are too many teams now that can generate too much of it. it right. It should just be at least curved a little bit. Right. Uh, yeah, Hope, Thanos, Molecule Man, and Thanos, or Thanos, Hope, Star Sapphire, and Molecule Man can all do four, and then Thanos does one for free, and then Molecule Man does three for free. I'm going to have to do 20 squares of barrier at some point. Like, it's down to, like, the last 10 minutes of the final game at Worlds, and I'm like, well, I am sorry, Jason, with your three apocalypses. Uh, I'm building 20 squares of barrier this turn. We're going to hey, roll off. You better hope that you won map and took me indoors then. <laughs> I have stealth too, so that helps. They um, don't all have stealth. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not also threatened by your charge. Um, I hope I can do something about Famous you. Famous last words. Famous <laughs> last words. Famous last words. As, as Apocalypse charges in and eats Molecule Man into another game. <laughs> right. Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, if Jason yeah. and I get to that position where we're at the final table at Worlds and it's three Apocalypses versus Thanos, I will be extremely happy. No matter, <laughs> yeah, no, matter no matter, the outcome. Yeah. All right, Seven yeah. of Cups. My issue with the Seven of Cups is that it is not reliable. Which one is that? The Mastermind. The, mastermind. the uh, best character for it already does a better version. That's right. Then that would not make it the yeah. best character for it. Like, Sorry, the character that... Was, that but even the so, best like... Mastermind character in the game. But even if you would, like, want to use it for, like, um, a gladiator build, it's not reliable enough to come up. 
Um, the yeah. problem is, is that it's a twenty percent chance with a five card deck of it coming up turn one. It is almost always useless turn one. Yep. Um, I said almost always. Or it's so far gone in the game. If it's turn five, you're probably winning or losing by that point, no matter what you have with Mastermind. Mm-hmm. So to want it to come up in the middle is such a low chance that you just can't be relied on. I think. Um, do could I see this card being in decks though? Yes. Um, it's not that big a deal. Uh, Regen is free. Um, it's a I know yep. that one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Of playing Page that, of cups. playing that one, right? I'm not. No. Um, yeah, Apocalypse has regen on the back half. It, its whole back half is Dallas regen. I would and play like it, it. it. Oh, go ahead. If you're playing Franklin, well, that's I mean, what I was, that was what I was going to say. For my Nats team, I would maybe play it. Franklin you, doesn't typically get hurt. That's a let me, let me ask you this question. Himself, I guess that's not if true, if so. you go back to your Nats team. Do you play the uh, the high priestess for the super sense? No, I'm sorry. The the plus one to d six rolls. No, absolutely not. Good answer. <laughs> Franklin taking four damage is hilarious. Um, well, no, no, high priestess, maybe because high priestess. Uh, you're thinking wands. you're thinking of the queen of wands. The queen of wands. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, high priestess. I, I get him. High priestess. I absolutely is the re- would. that's the reroll one, right? Yeah, that one I would. Okay, I I, I brought up a card that we haven't gotten. To. My right. Yes, but no, that's a good point. But yes, I would probably. I don't know if I would play the regen one. I feel like I would have to, but I would have to pick regen in yeah. order to get regen and then use it as free. Regen but, is all the regen card is also a good net neutral card because the only other character that really uses regen is Thanos and he can already do it. Yeah, he can already do this free. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he can. Um, all right. Uh, Knight of Cups. Thanos likes this card. That's the invuln one. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it just means you're definitely not killing him that turn. Uh, depends, right? Um, I have lost Thanos once to the Muramasa. Unless you get Muramasa, yeah. Yeah, I have lost Thanos once to the Muramasa blade, uh, but I ended up winning and scoring three hundred points. Go go collector, hitting for multiple extra points of damage throughout the game. Yep. Um. Yeah, there's just outside of Thanos, there's just not a lot of invuln that you're readily playing. There's not a lot of invuln reduces penetrating damage. Yeah, like Captain Marvel might be the only other one. Venom Magneto, if you played them higher, which no one ever does. Uh, if you're gonna start quipping people with the golden armor, uh, it's magic. True. Yeah. True. That's true. Um, Queen of Cups. So this is the characters take maximum of two damage from attacks. I was playing this. Th- card but that does inhibit thanos and my team from slapping for six so yeah, that's why i'm that's why i won't play it either it's just too hindering on turns that i want to attack that's right yeah i don't know maggot teams are maybe the only ones i could see possibly playing this like wanting to play this that's fair because it could just come up at the wrong time when you're like all set up no tokens on your pieces you've got the great attack and it's like nope you they're only gonna take two yep sucks for you or scarab teams teams that like really invest in the scarab even though he likes the mind control but being able to you know you're only dealing they're only taking one anyway right so all right on to pentacles that is the movement slot um, Ace of Pentacles. When a character uses Flurry, misses one or both attacks. After resolution, they make a close attack. Um, it's just a reroll for Flurry. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's basically yeah. just prob, except for against super senses. Right. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Uh, Sky Tyrant teams, Saki Iron Man teams, like this team, like that card. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't. I don't think Saki Iron Man actually likes that. Because he has a high attack value most of the time. I feel like some of the other cards are better for him in right. his pentacles. Well, right? then just tell us what they are when we get to them. 
Uh, five of Pentacles, when a character uses charge, they modify speed plus two. Uh, <laughs> y'all's APOC pogs. I, like considered, that I considered I considered changing yeah. my uh, my knockback card to this one. Yeah, I, mean, I considered playing five of Pentacles, but I just decided that the ten of Pentacles was probably going to get used more. Right. This is not one of the cards you play for Sarkarian Iron Man. No. He already has the plus two most of the time. So right. Yeah. So no. Uh, six of Pinnacles. Uh, mind control and after resolutions, they may deal their printed value, damage value between all hit targets. This um, card didn't be made ever. Guess what? Um, I've played like seven games and I have not got to use the Six of Pinnacles yet. Well, it is on my ruler team. My heart breaks for you, Argentina. <laughs> it has either it, it has either come up it has either come up turn one um a turn where i could not get rid of battle fury or a turn where i had two tokens and couldn't get into position yeah i just my control is already such a impactful power that i don't believe this card needed to be made but right. anyway right it's a really good card but what i would say is that um had in any situation I got to use the Six of Pinnacles, um, I will score points. Yep. Um, because if the Six of Pinnacles pops up, that's a Molecule Man, that's a Flash, um, that's almost a Scarab, um, that's a Venom, that's a Venom Magneto, um, uh -huh. you know, that's a Wizard, that that's a I don't know. That could be a Scarlet Witch. If a Scarlet Witch it's a high, had... It's a high evolutionary. Yeah, it's a high evolutionary. Um, golly, it is a lot of things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it can also like deal with like the Fantastic Four characters. Like, oh, this character dies to three, and you can't mastermind it. Oh, tough luck. <laughs> right, but on that one, I also... like The perfect turn is like, draw the Fool, draw the Pinnacles, draw the Six of Pinnacles. Uh, um, so I just get to master my on the back-to-back the back -to -back turns. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am playing this card on the ruler team because I think it's actually low-key good for Scarab. It's not low-key good for Scarab. It's really good for well, Scarab. Well, low-key in the sense that people don't realize it's good for Scarab because he's inhibited, inhibited by the, like, when you attack, you only deal the one. But that he, not he apply to that. <laughs> right. So he, mind control, he only has a two, so it's not crazy. But still, being able to mind control somebody through things with radioactive clay, and then afterwards dealing that person two damage. Half of the characters that Dan listed died of two damage. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty good. So it, it's on the ruler build I have for Scarab specifically. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that card needed made, but that's my opinion. Uh, Seven of Pentacles is the. It's the can't use improved movement abilities, and characters that have plasticity have free move at half speed. This is the one I would play over here. This card is maybe one of the best tarot. Hmm. The the amount of of mobility it gives you, especially if you're playing Venom Mags. Mm hmm. True, yeah. Free, free move yeah. four with a passenger four, free move to position, TK out. Yeah, it's just, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I think Venom Mags and Sarkarian Iron Man are the two well, main pieces. Venom Any, Wolverine. Anybody that loves the cloak. So, yeah. Um, I'm putting the cloak on Thanos. So, Thanos, yep. likes, Thanos likes to move six squares and not have to choose Space Gym. Yep. Uh, just keep in mind. You don't get to go through walls like you would with Space Gem, so it's fine. I build the walls whenever he comes back, so <laughs> right. But I'm, you know what I mean. Like you would use the Space Gem in phase for free. <coughs> oh man, all, I'm with you. You don't Alex. get all the you don't but get all the improved movement stuff. Venom because... Wolverine also loves this card. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I, eight, any of the, any of the, I guess any of the Venom figures do because they all have plasticity, right? Yeah. Man, we got a bunch of Pinnacles. Um, yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, eight of Pinnacles is the knockback one. It's probably like you were saying the most net neutral one. Yep. Um, we got the nine of Pinnacles, which is the Canadian sidestep. <laughs> um, 
I thought it was the Kenny Pena side step. Uh, he did it at Ken- Ken- at Canadian, Canadian Nationals. Nationals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, like, like I'll, I'll just say this: Are y'all? My internet's been going crazy. So, um, but like, it's kind of obvious, right? I mean, we know that Kenny worked at WizKids while this set was being designed. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it was. I think it was a joke. Him. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> congratulations, Kenny. That's awesome that you like got that. Got that in. Inspired the tarot card. I, mean, yeah. I, don't know what, I don't know what else they could do with a sidestep. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I mean, they like, could. Like, I guess you could have like given a passenger. They could have. Um, oh, I've got a good one that would have been better. I'm listening. You could do it again. If this has anything to do with Thanos, I'm going to scream. Um, it could be half your speed value becomes the amount you can move. Yeah, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, man, that would be... <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, so... Sidestep's already one of the best powers oh, of the Dan, game. I'm, I'm really glad you're not a, a hero <laughs> designer. Just let me put that out there. Like yeah. Some of the some of the ideas you come up with. When everything's like, broken, oh. nothing is broken. That's right. It would be amazing. Um, <laughs> Ten of Pentacles is the hypersonic speed one. Uh, that's a... Go ahead. That, that, I think that one's totally fine. That's a good one. Yeah, that card's good. I think, a good play, I, think I also play this one over Flurry. Being able to not have to token up Sarkan and mm-hmm. Iron Man after a first turn hypersonic, that changes your pacing a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. not not having to token up my death, uh, tough pogs is, uh, yeah, yeah, real good, it's super solid. Is how does the card read again? When a character uses hypersonic, when a character hits with hypersonic, it hits. uses hypersonic and hits. During okay, the action. okay. So I can't just like hypersonic death out, make no attack, and and not token. Right. No. Uh, if if like Dan uh, Dan designed the card, that would that would that's how it would how work. It would work, yeah. Probably. Yeah. There's a, there's a card in the OP that lets you move and then don't they take a token off them after resolution. Yeah. 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 Mm. That was a good good designer there. Um Five of Swords, uh super strength one. Uh probably not relevant. Um <laughs> so that card's really bad. Right. But yeah, it's not there's... it's not it's not impactful, right? So nope. Uh, maybe yeah, if you don't yeah. like any other swords, that's a good one. Yeah, that is the most irrelevant of all the cards. The the only one. Wait. When a character that can use super strength is given an action, so mm-hmm. any action, any, any action. I mean, this isn't bad for Sarkane and Iron Man. Are you picking super strength? If it's you a don't, de- if it's you a don't dead get, turn, right? You don't like, get to put the object on your card when you do that. That's fine. Like my thought is like if I don't have any objects, like it's any action, right? Like could it be a free action? Yes. So like if I'm double tokened with Sarkarian Iron Man and I've got nothing to do, there's so many turns where I don't have anything to pick. Like I have the like turn one or turn two. Sorry, turn two. If I can't make an attack, I'm like, shoot, I choose Earthbound? Stealth? I don't know. So, like, if I could choose Super Sense and, like, sidestep, and now I've got another object that they... You can't, or you can't, you can't choose put it on your card. Well, you can't, no, you can't super, super Strength. So, what you can do is if you perplex, oh, strength, okay. you perplex, yeah. generate an object, and then you can sidestep, pick it up. And then you generate... No, you can sidestep, drop it, because you, you generate it and hold it. But you sidestep drop it and then hypersonic that next turn or something like it yeah just gives, true. it just gives another standard object i think that's there this one isn't neutral i would say there are plays for it it's neutral for a lot of teams but right. i think sarkar and iron man is maybe the only person who can i think it. i think you're working way too hard to make that card do something <laughs> uh, when there's a lot of other card swords that where there's matter. where sword is already a, a pretty good suit I, that's, I guess that's my trick is I don't feel like sword is with what we have the seven swords. So let's like I would I would play nine over that. Yeah. So let's talk about the six of swords next. 
Uh, when a character uses incapacitate after resolutions, they may deal their printed damage value. Divided this between... card is terrifying. Yes. Sorry. This card should be terrifying to Sakarian Iron Man. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so... Uh, what most people forget is Charge Flash has in-cap. Right. Yeah, if Charge Flash gets... Yeah. If this card comes up and Charge Flash gets to Sakar and Iron Man, he's KO'd. I, assuming that you hit, right? He's got a 12 attack, he can get perplexed and shit. Um, Does Sakar and Iron Man die on 7 or 8? Um, I thought he took 6. You have to deal on 7. Okay, but he's on last click. Mm-hmm. And double token. Um, mm-hmm. So you just make the last attack where so he, oh he he do, he does take he dies on click eight. Yeah, yes. he wouldn't be double tokened. Of, uh, well, unless he already had a token. You can't. No, I'm I'm, I'm in cap. Yes, you can. It's you, a passive effect. Yeah, you can use oh, it twice. Yeah, oh, my mm-hmm. bad. So, yeah, that's that's really good. Um, and you know also well, lets Flash get around Mystics. Yeah, and which you know Flash hates Mystics. Yeah. And you know so the la- add, the, and you know the lasso, that's just yep. a thing. Mm-hmm. Like I definitely see it being played for lasso. If you're playing a flash team, is this an automatic like one flash? I don't mean like a bunch of flashes. Is this an automatic add for just any flash team? I think so. I think if you have like flash to carry, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. imagine the world where like, well, it's not as good with Scarlet Man because it's only a two damage, but he can like pick in cap if he needs to. Because that just gives, like, really good... Uh, it switches tempo. So, I think we also have to remember that, like, the Danger Room constructs really like yep. this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Will it make them playable? Does it, does it make it over the top? No, because you still have to draw the card. Right? Right. So, right. let's not forget that. Right? Let's not get just too distracted by that. Um, but, like... You give this to you give the lasso to Juggernaut or whatever. Who gets and, to make a free close pack when he moves? Right. Yeah. So now he's in capping you and then dealing you three damage, and you ha- it takes five hits to KO him. Okay. And then he gets to use the lasso as free after that with a close attack. To time out though. Mm-hmm. This also kills Danger Room figures. It sure does. It sure does. You're you're right. Yep. Yeah. Good 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 catch. Like it's equally bad. Now depends on if how many people are playing in cap. Like that's a that's a big one. Yep. Like not a lot of people. Like even though Mad Jim and Molecule Man all have it, they all have one damage, so it's not The not the scary the damage. scary part with this is like Dan said is the lasso, especially with Mad Jim. Yeah. Like just it, being like, oh, end cap card came up. Looks like we're switching to lasso, boys. Well, and lasso on like a seventy six build too. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you lasso up to try to get the free attack to lower your attack total, and you take damage from him because he's a three attack. I think he's, he's a three. Three damage. Yeah. I mean, three damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's nothing to sneeze at. That. Nope. nope. Um, is there a Wonder Woman with four damage? Uh, I don't think so. No. There's one with I know the prime has three, the rare has three. Oh, but no, um, wait a minute. Um, holy shit! If this card comes up on a Wonder Woman, does it? She just does she just? No, hold on. She has to divide among hit cards. Oh, okay. I was about to say, does she just like deal like? 12 damage to everybody. No, the card, the card divides it, but she does get to divide amongst all hit targets. Right. So, anyways. And she got to do it twice. Incoming the new Wonder Woman and Jumpa meta. Right. <laughs> they, but, they get A-cap as free with the range of four. So. I would say Six of Swords is a really good card. Yep, agreed. But it all comes down to it's hard to get that card to come up when you need it. Yep. And if you see your opponent, because you'll get to know what your opponent's deck is. If you see them playing this card uh, and you're afraid of it, you go kill that good in capper. <laughs> right. Which is Shard Flash, who you wanted to kill anyway. That's right. You got it. 
Uh, nine of Swords. Uh, when a character that can you Nine of Swords is the reason you buy the starter game, and probably with the Ace of Cups, I think is the one the other one that's in there. And the map, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, when a figure used Precision Strike, it can't be evaded, and the damage taken can't be reduced below two instead of one. Um, this is a really great Swords card. Playing this on APOC. I, I agree. I think the picture on the card is so relevant simply because there's a lot of Super Sense out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And more likely than not, most teams are playing people with super senses. Mm-hmm. This card is very much a double-edged sword. Like, you need to be very careful when you're playing this. Like, your APOC team is fine with mm-hmm. it, but like, think of all the people that have super senses. Oh yeah, I I am well aware. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's mm-hmm. a, um, out there. Now, you guys are playing it because you have the one paw. Because has- Death loves this card. I also, I was I had it originally on my build when I was still playing Legacy Cyclops, who I might still play. Uh, so Legacy Cyclops is with this is also really good. So what I mean by that is that this isn't just an ad if your person has Precision Strike. This isn't just an immediate ad. You really need to consider, okay, who else on your team has super senses? Because this could really, Mad Jim, Mad Jim's gonna die, basically. Scarab's gonna die. Like I'm not playing this. I just was saying I was playing the the opposite card, the super sense is better card. I'm not playing this card. Oh, I'm, I'm playing this for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It really. I think there's less teams than you might think that should play this card. So the the thing the thing with the, a card like this, and this kind of goes against my like net neutral argument. Um, this is a card that is very beneficial for me because of because of death. I will have first action with it, and I know it's there. So I should be able to know where your precision striker is coming from, and keep my few characters with super senses away from. Uh, I yeah. I have all of the information for this card. But you don't know, except you don't know when the card will show up. Correct, correct. But I will know when it shows. I, like, that's why I said I have first action with this card. Sure. Right. Still, like, if you're going to play Scarlet Witch, you don't want to play this card. Like, somebody. No, like, no. Yeah. Right. It, it really hampers the stop play. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just that there's. What I'm saying is that there's so many Super Senses. Faust, Super Senses. Like, a lot of yeah. pieces rely on Super Senses. Venom Magneto really needs his super senses to sure. stay alive. Um, but it, there's also not a ton of precision strike. Yeah, um, I think that's why like yeah, it's it's true. just it's a lot for Sakari and Iron Man to play this card. It's it's a really good card for him. Yeah, agreed. Because he can pick yeah, it. I would not play like even though it would be great because I have two pick of powers, because I'm playing Scarlet Witch, I probably would not play this. Right. Like, that's that's that it, that's a big battle between me. It's like okay, I can have Franklin and Sarkarian Iron Man pick Precision Strike and go to town, but that also may, it, that also means Scarlet Witch is probably going to die. So, is that a good enough trade off to play this when it could come up at the worst time? But so in in that argument, um, you can do your things with Sarkarian Iron Man and Franklin, and just let. Scarlet Witch sit inside the room. Sure. Yeah, uh, but once again, that all depends on where I'm at and the pacing of the game. It might and, be- and that's definitely why I said it's it's okay because you have first action with it. But right. you, you, That's assuming first action with it means I have the capabilities of making use of it, of like yeah. getting my Super Sense people away, getting the rune out, like I probably don't mm. have the space to get the rune out. Like, there's and the rune. The rune's not protection from it. They can just shoot you from outside of the rune. That's, they can. Yeah, that's, I, that is that is only a protection for a close combat attack. Like, right. Yeah, I, I think if I'm playing, if ha- similar to why I'm playing the super sense, the other super sense card. If half of my team has super senses, I'm not playing this card. What's that? You know, that's that's the same with any of these cards, though. If they if it negatively benefit, you know, hurts you, yeah. don't play it. That's, right. just, that's what it is. Right. I have like two characters with super senses on my team that have, that, that are hurt by this card. Right. Yeah, like on my team, I have I have I have a pog that has super senses and also has shape change. So fine, I play it. It benefits. Yep. 
All right, uh, Page of Swords, Steel Energy. They heal two clicks instead of one. Um, you play this with Thanos? Thanos likes this card. It's his only attack power, so yeah, he likes it. <laughs> um, this uh, is the only Swords card you would play with Thanos? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So I, I guess when we get the other Swords cards, that might change. Maybe. Depending on what they are. Because for me, it's like... I don't know, Steel Energy. Like, you don't get the Steel Energy with the Mind Control. And you when you pick that power, you already get the free regen. So how uh, often do you Steel Energy with Thanos but in general? As often as I can. But that, that wasn't the answer. What was... Like, how often do you actually do it? Uh, I'm going to say half the time, probably. Because if they're hitting Thanos, they're not hitting him for two. They're trying to hit him for eight. So I'm trying to he I'm trying to heal up as much as possible. I'm just trying to think of the games I've, I've watched, and half of the time when they're... I don't... Anytime I've played Thanos, I don't remember the last time I ever saw Thanos steal energy. Usually I, it's... I've seen it. I, well, I mean, I know it exists. I'm just saying I don't... I haven't seen it. Most of the time, if they're that low, they pick it to free regen, and then they're yeeting themselves out of there and saying, like, bye, I'm leaving. Well, I mean, I try to do that, too, obviously. So, I, it, right now, it makes perfect sense to play the card because there's not a better right. Swords card for Thanos. But I'm curious about, in the future, whether you stick with it because it's kind of situation. Well, I'm not worried like, about I, the, I'm I, not worried about the future until after September 18th or whenever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving along. Knight of Swords. Uh, when a character uses telekinesis after resolutions, remove an action token from them. But I get it, Alex. I get where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. not if you're just... playing Venom Mags, consider playing this card. That's right. It's on, Yeah, this one's on my team. Yeah. Uh, King of Swords. Yeah. Uh, Queen of Swords. Um, meh. It's yeah. interesting. But this is the one that's like when you hit with doubles, you remove an action token? Uh, well, 10 and 11 are crits. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah. King, King of Swords. Hey, uh, hey, I just want to point out the APOC guys are saying it's meh because they don't want you to be hitting their APOC with crit plays. Just saying. That's that's you too. That's all three of y'all saying that. <laughs> I, I'm fine with everyone playing it, but I'm just saying. I just think it's not consistent. Same reason I don't like strength. It's also my ten and elevens are crits ten, uh, ten, against 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 them. I would say this card is. I feel like I don't know the numbers. I feel like this card is statistically more plausible than strength. I feel like tens and elevens, you have a better chance of rolling that than doubles. I may be wrong, but in my head, that no sounds right. doubles come up more often than yeah. Six five. There's only two combinations that make a ten, or four combinations that make. And you know. you're including twelve, so ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, it's six six five six five five six four. Yeah. As opposed to, I could potentially roll two threes and crit hit. Right. Yeah, so I guess it's three versus four is what you were saying. Right. Uh, six 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 four. Five six. Five five. Five five. So that's four. And then there's one one, two two, three three, four four, five uh, five five, six six. So there's six doubles. Which I is guess. what the the King of Swords does. Uh after resolutions, remove an action token from them. Yeah, this is worse than the other one. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um uh, it is. But it's in a different suite, so it might not be bad. Alright. Let's round this out with some wands. Then we have a couple more questions to answer. Uh, two wands. Hit characters have battle fury until your next turn. Even if this card is not in play, um, not every team should play this, but this card is really good. Yes, I agree. Um, four I wands. I agree. I, this is another one of those cards that I would say really do a deep dive before you blindly put this on your team. That's right. So. Um, so, uh, when a character that can use exploit weakness makes a close attack after resolutions deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character adjacent to a hit target, 
Uh, Sky Tyrant really likes to play this card. Yep, so does mm -hmm. Venom Wolverine. Um, because it's the four wands splashes the shit out of a Quake exploit. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it could be really bad. It says adjacent to a hit character. Nope. To each opposing character. Oh, adjacent to a hit target. Yeah, yeah. So it's just one. But. But you get to pick which one. Right, and it could pro. It would activate twice. You know, during a flurry quake. So. So you're potentially doing two for. You're potentially doing six damage to certain targets in a quake. Cool. Yeah. I would really have to debate whether I want to play this. Would you play this on the Annihilation build? No. No. The problem you don't have is anybody with who's who has exploit Annihilation. Daemons, all the, all the demons that you mm. pop out, they all have quake exploit. Yeah. The problem is is that it's really bad when it's used against you. Or but, also has it not that you're doing a close attack with them, but right because if they get the exploit going off on a character next to Apoc. They start dealing penetrating damage to Apoc, which he doesn't like. He sure doesn't. Um, not that that KOs him, but it certainly wounding him is not good. Um, yep. Nine of Wands? Oh, or did we miss the four one? Oh, no, Nine of Wands. Uh, Empower plus one attack. That's the one you're playing on your Apoc team, right, Az? Mm-hmm. Empower gets plus one attack? It's pretty net neutral, so... Yeah, because like, my thought process was like, what are you going to do? Hit my pogs or hit APOC better? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right. I don't, I, yeah, I guess I'd have to see the other wands. Because that one, to me, it's like almost every team, I feel like, has a Marbella, So. Yeah, but it, so, yes, they can get the use out of it, but I don't really care about them having extra. That's not what my defense is. That's what I mean, like, it, I have to see the other cards. If there was anything else that is neutral, this might be the most neutral just because... It was originally on that team, was that should be the next card. Uh, which is the Tin of Wand. The first time Perplex is used, the chosen combat value is modified plus two, minus two, instead of plus one, minus one. Yeah, I was wrong. It's actually the, the next one. The next, next one. Should be the Knight of Wands. Um, but, I mean, I think that this card is really powerful for just about every team. Yeah, um, nothing really mm -hmm. particularly wrong with this one. So. This is also a very symmetrical card. Um, you're not getting more value out of it than your opponent as long as long as your opponent also has a perplex. Right. Um, Page of Wands is the outwit one. They can use outwit twice or use outwit on two powers. Um, the problem I have with this one is that outwit is needed, but so situational. Because, like, it's like everybody is walk, rocking protected these days. It's a, yeah. This is on my team. This it's one, also, I'm actually playing two Wands cards, so... This card is very good for certain for certain matchups, but there's also a lot of matchups I feel like one outwit is enough. Like, I, you rarely need to outwit a character multiple times. Uh, Scarlet Witch. I said rarely. Right. Like, one character, yes. I yeah, think... I mean, or maybe Sakaar and Iron Man if you're outwitting the willpower and his special yeah, damage he's... power. Yeah. But, or outwitting charge and sidestep or hypersonic and charge. Um, but... I guess I say that because I keep playing the pieces that need to be double outwitted. So. <laughs> right. That's fair. So fair. I would say the problem is, is that the outwit is going to be turn situational. Yep. The perplex is nearly always good to go. Mm -hmm. Because worst case with the perplex one, you can always just go plus two into defense. Yep. And that's so, almost and that is almost never a bad decision. Uh, the reason why I'm playing this one is because the person who utilizes this the most is Scarab, like one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's most likely outwitting every turn, just for the most part. Unless your team is like Thanos, where almost everybody has power cosmic, like. Being able to outwit two powers through equipped people or through objects, uh, he's almost always getting use out of that. So, right, be, being able to do two and outwit super senses and toughness or something, you know, it, it's much better. So, right. 
Uh, Knight of Wands. When this character uses leadership, increase the roll by one. Uh, which um, the APOC guy asked about. Um, blah, blah. Carlos, um, we talked about the Mastermind card. Here's your leadership card. Why are you not playing the leadership card as? So I took this one off of my team for the Empower card because it's just not consistent enough. Um, and there are very few times I felt like, one, like just my rolls just turned out that it wasn't consistent enough because going from a, six, a 33 to a 50... Yes, it's seventy percent, but it just didn't feel consistent enough. But also, like, it just accelerates you by one pog, and you usually don't make famine anyway. <laughs> but so, let me ask you from that thought process: sure. You're saying it's not beneficial enough. The chance of it being beneficial is not enough. Mm -hmm. So you're alternatively going to a neutral card that doesn't benefit you at all. The empower card absolutely benefits me. Oh, I thought you were saying... I have, like, neutral. five empowers on my team. You did I thought you just said it was neutral. That's why I was... No, I said it is... So, it is neutral against me. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I have... Sense. I have Moloid. I have uh, Zero Point Multiple Man. And I have the ability to... Uh, and APOC have empower. Okay. All right. That makes more sense. I, I was thinking you are like, this is my neutral one. No, 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 no. I actually you get a lot of use out of the, the empower. Okay. Um, I think um, this card is fine. Uh, I know yeah. what you mean by as far as for your APOC team, sure, but like Blackheart obviously plays this card. Yes, absolutely. Um, almost anyone that relies on leadership to hit certain things, Monarch probably would play this card if he was a thing. Um, <laughs> he would love this card. So Stop trying to make Monarch Just put him on your ruler team already. He Jeez. doesn't have not enough time to make it happen for Worlds, but you just wait. You just do. Here it is. Knight of Wands, Cloak, Monarch. Monarch. Go. Done. You made him work, Alex. Yep. Yep, it's done. It's over. Monarch is like Fetch. You're never going to make it happen. I'm going to... Well, I am in Silver Age. <laughs> Give me that Reign of Terror map, and I'm going to... That location bonus. Monarch's absolutely going to happen in Silver Age. Right. Um, Queen of Wands. This is the one that I'm playing. This enables for four gem turns. Yep. This also allows for four damage Franklin turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Don't play, don't play this one. Uh, but your opponent could be playing this one, and when you pick powers with Franklin, you might not have a choice. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's half damage, so like... If he rolls a six, he takes four. Oh. Oh, man. I tell you, I like I like Franklin. I mean, I you know, I think he's cool, but like, I don't like playing against Franklin, obviously. Um, anybody with charge flurry and uh, access to six damage, I don't like, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the thought of him taking four damage is pretty satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably just wouldn't take pick powers that turn. Which you are also okay with if you play. Right, that right. means you don't pick powers. Sounds yeah. good. It's okay. I'll uh, just hide him. Lockjaw run away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, run away! All these things are great. Yeah, this gets to where he's not in my face. Sounds great. <laughs> um, King. I feel like my APOC team is taking a dance stance of like, yeah, yeah, run away, please, <laughs> go away. Yeah, y'all so, are y'all um, are all just soaking in the fact that you want to just fight the opponent from your starting area because it's just better. I mean, I fight them in the middle of the map. I just happen to not leave my starting area. <laughs> Well, I do too, but that's after I TK phase and then move back. Too much work on that one. Oh, so, yeah. That's too much. Before we become the Thanos APOC podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. what other effects is this useful for? Because this is a unique one where it's a Felix single Faust. D6. Single D6 when a character rolls any D6, basically. Felix Faust. Yeah, and it's not a success fail roll, so it could make Felix Faust not if not um, not work. Yep, it also can turn a, a five into a uh, a, into a what? A five. Into a penetrating damage. Right. This um, doesn't work on any D six roll, right? It does. Yeah. So, like leadership, does it work on? It works on leadership. It does right. absolutely. Okay. But if it's a if it's a success fail roll, 
it mm-hmm. doesn't get increased beyond six. Correct. Right. Because okay. a six is just always a success. Right. I thought maybe I was misunderstanding. No, it works on willpower. It works on leadership. It works on super sense of shape, change, impervious, and yeah, it works so on why, the unique. Well, why, why play? Yeah, why play the Knight of Wands instead of this? Because it's just multi-perfect. Because this one is much scarier when your opponent has it in certain matchups. I. E. Everybody has I. E. Thanos. Uh, he's yes. probably already playing it though. Yes, but you don't want to give him two turns of it in a game. Um, it also works for regen. Don't forget that. It does work for regen. Yeah. Um, it works for Unis the Untouchable. Yeah. In a bad way, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need, you need to preface that it's bad. It works for, it works for blades. Um, it works for any figure that needs to roll a d6 to add tokens. So you have Chase Black Widow from War of the Realms. You have Reed Richards Alpha. I think does that also. This may be a uh, leadership role. Mary, it would work with uh, Reed Richard Fixers of the Universe. Mary Jane Watson's Watson. Paparazzi's. Yep. Man, do you remember when Molecule Man used to roll a D6? Wait a minute. Uh, could, yeah. So does this, could this give uh, Mary Jane Watson four pogs? It could. Isn't that fun? Yeah, sure is. <laughs> or is there, there's not a max. Yeah, there's not a no, max. No, it's just as long as she doesn't have any on the board when she uses the power. Yeah, that's fun. Go, yeah, so, let's go for that. So, yeah, so, so this can work. This also works multiple times a turn, I assume. It's on got... every D6 roll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unlike the yeah. unlike the the reroll one, which is a one. Right. This is definitely one that probably sounds better on paper, only because it probably hurts you a lot as well, just because of. Your opponent probably also has super sense and shape change. And yeah, I think this is. card this card is way too high impact against you. Um, I'm totally playing it. Well, of yes. course you are. It's also way yeah. high impact for you. I don't know. Yeah, it depends. Like da- in Dan's situation, sure, absolutely. Like, well, like Apocalypse is... rolls for colossal. You know, he rolls to take tokens off. He rolls to make leadership to make bogs. He has shape change. Nah, like, I don't think it's. I, I think it's the the. Yeah, unless you're Thanos. Yeah, but you're, 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 you're afraid of card. You're afraid of anything that helps That's you. That's how you should it. play tarot, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> play if, it doesn't benefit, if, 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 if it doesn't benefit you, then, you, then why are you playing them at all? Because I play the ones that do benefit. And they just you, don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Honestly, when, when you deal with an extra variance, you take out as much of the variance as possible. It doesn't just don't play them then. Like, yeah, you don't have to play tarot cards. So. You're right, but if I don't play tarot cards, then I can If I could just play two tarot cards, I would. But I can't. I have to play five. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I have to play five. You don't have to play any. Yes, yeah. but I, if I want to play the fool, I have to play. I think uh, yeah, so... I think I like the idea of uh, just being able to play one card. <laughs> <laughs> There's designer Dan again. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I, I, if you're, unless you're Thanos, I don't think enough figure, the enough teams get more benefit out of it than him. And just with how prevalent he will still be, I think it's too dangerous to give him two turns of this card. Yeah, that's mm. pro- that's probably fair. I think I like it for my team because I just have too many roles that benefit from it. And if Thanos gets four gems twice, I, I don't care. Um. Before we round everything out, obviously we got the one last one, King of Wands. When a character damages an opposing character with an attack after resolutions, remove an action token from them. This is very a uh, hum ha. Like, this one's pretty good for Sakarian Iron Man. Like almost all the King cards, I think, are like this because the yeah. King of Swords was similar. We don't they have are. the other King ones, so they all have to do with like removing a token. Yeah, that's what it seems like. But yeah. This is a really good Sakarian Iron Man card. I think it's a good, like, Sky Tyrant card. Because usually Sky Tyrant's going out with, with a token, so just being him to be able to be not double tokened. Right. And the fact that he also has Injustice League, so, like... So you could potentially go to zero tokens. That's right. All right. So um, that rounds up the tarot card talk. We have a couple of more um, uh, questions to answer. 
Uh, the one from Andrew Wilson, best Silver Age ID cards for characters. We're gonna, I'm gonna table that one because I want to talk about Silver Age refresher. If you want, Andrew, listen to our episode about April-ish time frame uh, where we prep for the Huntington's event. Uh, we go pretty in depth about Silver Age at that point. Um, uh, let's see, Kurt Thomas. Are there any other OMAs? Available besides Chase Unimind? Um, no. Or no. Loki. No, I I would say 300 point apocalypse is just as viable as Chase Unimind. I I can agree. I would agree more if he had the generate power on But he always gets to make one. He does always get one. Which is probably enough, considering that Unimind was viable. Yeah. I think 300 Unimind is even acceptable to... Well, not more acceptable to... than Sorry, 300 APOC is not more susceptible to the rune than Unimind. They're both equally. But right. he's more susceptible to the rune than the lower point APOC. The... the yeah, I agree. I mean, three APOCs in general is just better than one APOC. True. But Unimind gets in a rune, he's unlikely to escape. That Three, is accurate. 300 point apocalypse in the rune. It's still colossal. Is going to escape. Assuming he's not double tokened, but there should never be a point where he's double tokened. Yeah. Um, because since he's not power actually to make horsemen. That's right. So it is possible mm -hmm. that 300 point apocalypse is viable yeah i mean that's if i if i mind. if i seen somebody playing it i would say you should have a plan for it yeah even if that plan is just how do i throw as many attacks into it as possible that's right because that's what you have to end up doing so mm -hmm. um and it'll have tarot cards working for it right Plus one yep. on its rolls, on its willpowers. Plus one on its impervs. Plus one on its shape changes. He um, probably uses gets the. He is probably the one, the one team that I would be like, yeah, you can run all those high impact cards. Yeah. Because uh, he also makes the pogs whenever he crosses a line too. So. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, big ups. And there's multiple lines for him to cross. Mm-hmm. Because there's the 250 line, the 200 line, and then the 100, the 100 line. line. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Uh, nope. I don't think so. I would apologize to Richard again. Slop, maybe next week, maybe. Uh, or on the way to Huntsville Friday. Because uh, tomorrow's Thursday. I plan on having the episode out Thursday. Um, Jason, I got a question for you for your final thoughts. Okay. Will we see a legacy apocalypse chucked into the wall <laughs> if someone KOs one of your apocalypses when they pull a tarot card? Hell no, those things are just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it's like, it's a good you're, you're, you're more you're more likely to see like an, a tarot card ripped in half. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're more likely to see it get chucked up on eBay. Well, right. that I, might be a case. I'm just I'm just saying they come in for a seven damage psi blast. You miss your shape change, and they crit hit you. And because do the, of the strength card. and do the and do this because of the strength card or because of the I don't know whatever b bullshit one we've been if talking. They hit me. I'm just going to prod them. I'm just going to prod them if they could hit me. No, it's nine squares away, Jason. I'm sorry. The, or, the, or you're going to prod. So they're going to roll double. Yeah. Okay. Oh, because because prod them into other doubles. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. Because you played the perplex card. They got a plus two to their range. I'm not playing the perplex. Card. Okay. Well, that's a good answer. But no, yeah, they, they played strength. They roll two fours, and then you reprob them into two fives. Oh, I got two more apocalypses that can prob, so I'll do that. Into two threes, which will still hit? Oh, all right, all right, all right. 
Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Definitely, definitely, definitely <laughs> not gonna chuck it into a wall. No way. No. Oh gosh. All right. That was my. I'm not going two hundred dollars in the garbage. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted. I just wanted to hear. Uh, I just want you to uh, be prepared in advance to contain your rage this weekend if a tarot card does not treat you very well. Oh, I'm just, I'm just going to bitch about tarot cards more next time. That is viable to do. The the Church of Net Neutral is open to you. All right. Um, Alex, final thoughts? Um, yeah. Excited to for worlds. I want to talk. I can't wait to talk more about Team Sealed. I think it's fun that we like there's actual hey, we should talk about Team Sealed because usually it's just like hope you don't get screwed on your pools. Whereas this is more now like, well, it's a brick, so there's actual strategy, yep, going into it. So that 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 changes it. I, I'm excited to talk about that in the future, right? As final thoughts, uh, I'm excited for worlds. Uh, it'll be great to, to just be there. I know I say that every time, but I'm excited, except for Silver. I'm not going to play in that event. Mm. I'm going to play in the Exo Swords event. Mm. 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 I just love <laughs> it. Someone, they were saying, I got a couple of things that they like the noises that I made whenever um, I talked about Silver Age. Um, so. Uh. But, but Alex, Alex, I'm just curious. Are you ready for your fast forces giant girl to have four damage when she retails? Yo, why is she gonna have four? Oh, because of uh, close combat. A close combat expert makes it a three, and then the collector that you make an Avenger makes it a four. I can't, I can't, man, because I have to play two. Steve, uh, Captain America's. And make WizKid Prime an Avenger. Uh, yeah, you can get an Empower in there. I, 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 I believe he just it. gives plus one damage. I, I really thought about making Collector an Avenger, and I just don't. Because I have to play two Captain Americas, I don't want to get stuck with one. Um, but right. no, Avengers, I think, way like super good in silver right now. Right. So. And the giant girls have celebrity, so they go on your Spider-Man theme. You're, you're good there, too. Right. Have to dig all those out. Right. Don't worry. I've got like thirty still. So just let me know. <laughs> um. My final thoughts. I'm excited for Worlds. I'm very hopeful about what Wizkids can talk to us about at Worlds. I'm very hopeful for a good outcome of any announcements, and I am looking forward to play, and I am looking forward to seeing everybody in Huntsville this weekend and finalizing my Silver Age team. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Clicks Off today, and we'll talk to you all next time. Later.